G Money. Yo. <laughs> We had to come all the way. We had to become mobile. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we had to be mobile. How you doing, man? Everything good. Everything good. Blessed to be here, man. How you feeling? Long time no see. I know. You out here, you know. Um, don't do that. You're going to do that. Don't play into that narrative because they, <laughs> they violating me. You left G-Money. Yeah, yeah, They pressing yeah. me on the podcast. I can never leave G-Money. Now nah, we here. We here, man. You know what I'm saying? It's good seeing you, bro. Likewise. Likewise. So as the people... Well, no, you know, before we introduce our guests, we had a new scene, of course, mm -hmm. you know, with, with these type of dudes, <laughs> Harlem or wherever they're from, it's always <laughs> something extra. It's like, I had to come here, you know the what I'm saying? Last Harlem do the same thing, right? We had a, the last... Uh, yeah, his uh, people, yeah. His we people had, his yeah, we had to go thing. to his we, house. We do it in yeah. our studio. They wanted to, us to come to, they, to their space. Hey, what is that about? Like, it's like a Harlem versus Queen. Like, they trying to what's going on, us? man. I don't know what's going on out here. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. But, but, but how you doing? You okay? Cooler, man. You know, real quick, I definitely want to give a... I rest in peace, my brother Robert. One time, my cousin Robert, you know what I'm saying, passed Robert. away. Uh, he was out in the A. So mm -hmm. salute them. Big fan of the show. You know what I'm saying. I was just on Facetime with him um, a few weeks ago. You know what I'm saying. He was telling me how much he loved the show and us uh, growing the show. You know what I'm saying. So rest in peace to him and my cousin Alexis as well too from Brooklyn. Shout out to her. Uh, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, big fan. Of, big fan of the show as well, and just always supported me and the whole movement. You know what I'm saying. So just wanted to show them love one time on the platform. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Man, rest in peace, man. Condolences, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate and, it. And all that. Man, we got, we got, shout out to Bassie in the building. Yes, Let's sir. Got a lot of beautiful, we got JR in the building. And we got, this <laughs> is being shot by Shatik. Beats on film. <laughs> this man, beats on, this man charge a lot of money. So don't think that, let me just keep it real with y'all. He's doing me a solid. Don't think because I signed the situation that, you know, he's doing me a solid. Mm -hmm. No, no, he ain't, I got to pay. But still, I don't want to say that. I want to see like I'm I'm, I'm powerful because mm. there's somebody in here that act like they're powerful. I remember him bringing like 30, 40 people out to one place and walking the streets in Miami. Oh, oh, like I want to be able to show him I'm powerful too. Nobody care about that old school. You know what I mean? <laughs> but G money, yo. <laughs> you know what? Shout mm -hmm. to my man. I'm gonna get to you, my man. My man in here watching me, mm -hmm. man. Um, let him wait a little bit. A little bit. Anyway, you know they're smiling. Now, don't talk, don't talk. We introduce you yet. Don't come. Don't talk yet. Don't talk yet. Oh man, it's gonna be one of them shows. It's gonna be one don't of them talk yet. Hold on. <clears throat> this is and before we get to our guest, let me <clears throat> see this. Excuse me, excuse me. This is somebody I knew for a long time. Facts. Since I was a kid, and all that, and I'm excited. <clears throat> I'm excited. But G Money, yo, episode two, two, one. We made it. We got a special guest. Facts. Uh, huh. Now, where do I start? Oh, man. Man, I remember when Stack, you know, uh, introduced mm -hmm. us to, to this wonderful man. All the they say about him, I didn't see it. From a kid, from when I saw him, they always just smile and, 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 and welcoming and, and love. Um, he gets people have been misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Um, to me, he's one of the most improved individuals <laughs> as a person. And all it's some sh with this, you know. But mm -hmm. um, one of the one of the greats, my friend. I'm gonna call him a legend because I'm gonna put that on him. Facts. I call him a legend. I said it. A round of applause for my man, Jim Jones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Cap on the building. Talking to Mike, man. Don't get too fly. Talking to Mike, man. Yeah. We got King. What up, man? How you doing? And we got in the back my man Dice. Dice Peso. Dice Peso. Dice, Dice over here pressing. <laughs> yo, we're going to interview. Oh, Capo, he going to interview me now because you. Stop, man. We've been talked about that. I told Dice, it, you know, we was fixing things up. Bronx. How you doing, man? I'm all right. How you feeling? It's good seeing you. Great seeing you. It's been a long time, right? Not too long. You know me since I was a, a, a kid. I know you. I know you for a long time, one hundred percent, for a very long time. R.I.P. Stack Bundles. Yeah, for a very, 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 very long time. Hmm. Good kid. Yeah. Thank. Good, I, good I don't kid. know if I take that as a comment or insult. What, what do you remember about Flip when you first met him? When I Flip, I mean, he hasn't changed too much from. He was just skinny with a big head. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the only thing that really changed for the most part. He's always been same same vibes, same energy, and right? Just crazy. Mm -hmm. He was a little. He was so. I, Flip has also changed a lot from who he used to be when he was young. 
like that. That's a fact. Very aggressive when he was younger and shit like that. I mean, as you know, they they from a very rough part of town, which people, I don't know if they know or not, but you know what I mean? When they look at Flip, they might see comedian and him having a good time and shit like that. But I'm happy for him because I know where he came from and I know what he escaped from and for him to be changing his life right now. And he has his son working with him. That speaks volume right there. Shout out to JR. It's a fact. You know, I appreciate that. Finally, you say something nice about your boy. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you, Kyle. That, that, that means a lot. G, you want to, you wanna, you know, are we going to do the typical um, how we do our think, interviews? Or, it's, it's so much with Capo, you know what I'm saying? From from the music to, to reality TV, like, you know what I'm saying? To to just, you know, weatherman, you know what I'm saying? He got, he got a lot of, he got a lot of, you, you want to start from jump? Let's start from jump. I mean, he can go through it. Yeah, start from jump with him. Let's get him, let's get him a little comfortable. Let's get him comfortable. Let's take it back to uh, Capo one time, man. Talk, talk about your childhood real quick. Let's, let's talk about, you know, uh, Jim Jones before Jim Jones. Talk about, you know, growing up in Harlem. Um, my childhood started in the Bronx, actually. Really? I grew up on 1801 Weeks Avenue. Mm. Very notorious block. Um, before they was using Heights as the uh, location to buy your Coke, it was Weeks Ave. That was where they came for the destination to buy the Coke, and this was the whole 80s. Mm. Um, I moved to Harlem around 89. But I've always been back and forth to Harlem because I went to school in Harlem, in elementary school, so I used to go back and forth to my aunt's house. But I moved to Harlem in 89 with my grandmother. When my grandmother moved from uh, Weeks Avenue, uh, God bless her soul. Uh, also, God bless my grandfather's soul. Um, uh, so, yeah, I moved to Harlem about 89. And then um started going to high school in Harlem, and that's where I learned how to hustle and learn everything I know about the streets. Was Well, not everything, but that's how... Right, right. My first initiation to really, really being outside and chasing after money and chasing after girls and trying to do everything that everybody was doing in Harlem at the time. That's a fact. You know, so th- for me, it's the first time me hearing you mention the Bronx. You know, is, is there a reason why you never mentioned the Bronx as far as like interviews? I mean, or? If you know my history, people know that I grew up in the Bronx and I'm very well rooted in the Bronx still to this day. Mm. But. I grew up in Harlem. I spent the days, I spent my years that counted as me becoming a man. Right. In Harlem, I learned how to hustle in Harlem. I learned how to talk to girls in Harlem. Like, I learned to gotcha. become a man in Harlem. Harlem was my playground. A Bronx was my childhood. I came up in the Bronx. I learned how to fight, scrap, hold my own. Bronx is very aggressive on the, on the play streets <laughs> in, in, in the summertime and things like that, playing skelsies and mm. all of that part of life is what I, I did in the Bronx, watching my uncles and my moms hustle and shit like that right outside. Like, this is when crack was full-blown outside and... We used to collect uh, empty crack vials and then <clears throat> turn around and start acting like drug dealers. Like, yo, I got yellow, we got red, I got purple. Like, that's how much crack vials used to be out on the street in the 80s and shit like that. So I'm from that era of the Bronx in the 80s. Mm. Active. Act- activo. Like, Real active. Dice Peso, father, and my uncle Ricky grew up together on Weeks Avenue and shit like that. They were good friends oh, wow. when they were coming up and shit like that. It's a crazy connection, right? Let me ask you a question, Kappa, where, where was your father at this time? My father grew up in the Bronx. Um, I, I got to see my father coming up, but I didn't get to see my father too much coming up. And then uh, by the age of 13, I haven't seen my father. It's uh, like 26 when I when we did the Rock Nation deal, the Rockefeller deal and shit like that. And somehow family seen some family and was able to have a small connection. But, um, yeah, my pops was in my life. In my life, the way I would like him, would have liked him to be, but you know, I was one of them kids that always loved my father every day. I couldn't see him and shit like that. He was definitely a cool dude, stayed fly, very fly. Um, Puerto Rican, smooth dude, had all the sheepskins, all the leaves, all the Adidas, the pro kids, fast shoelaces, matching the pinstripes, BVD t shirts in the summertime, shit like that. Straight Puerto Rican hustler, so her wrong. Also, got caught up on her wrong, and that's what kind of showing his life and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Man. Do you feel like, so when, when Pops is not around when you here in, in our community, right, do you think that, because you just said something that even if I didn't see him a lot, I still loved him as a father. Did it, as a child, did it affect you at all? Like, when he wasn't around, did you think about it or you became consumed into the streets or you had, like, your grandparents that was there that sort of alleviated that 
that thought. Hold on one second. Hello? Hello? All right. Yo, go open the door for uh, the lady that's coming to do my hair. She's outside. Her name is Sha. Right. They're coming to get you. All right, Paul, you know where we was at? No, I, I, About my I, pops, what you said? Yeah. I, I said, mean, it was like, all right, so in my family, I wasn't like an orphan, but I was moved around from home to home because my family had so much love. My mother had me at a very young age, at 16, something like that. So she was a baby when she had me. And um, my family chose to take care of me because she, she, as a child, she couldn't take care of me the way that they needed. So as they getting older, they helped out, helped out a lot. So I had a lot of uh, people in my life as father figures. So, there, But there was a lot of instances in that where there was times that I wish that I did have my father there. Or, or, you know what I mean? So, But there wasn't something I dwelled on. I, like I, 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 I wouldn't say I was consumed by the streets, but I was living life. That was something that, that wasn't nothing that you really stopped and, and thought about. Come on. Logical. One of your stuff in here play with me. What's wrong with you, bro? Talking to Mike, man. I ain't gonna lie, like like stuff like this, like it's we recorded? Yeah. Like stuff like this, like this, like who you think you are? I'ma get my hair braided on, on camera. Huh? I'm not, she, I'm, what are you she, doing? I'm multitasking. So so I got a hectic life. You told us about, you know, childhood and, and, and pops, you said that you was outside. So when did you like so you outside and you was in Harlem, that's where you learned how to hustle and stuff like that. When like at what age you really went outside though? I learned how to ride. My mother told me how to take the train by myself at nine years old from the Bronx to Harlem. You heard? Like, I was outside for a long time, bro. Like, I really, really, really been outside. Not to say I was doing dirt outside, but I had to learn how to move through the streets of New York City at a very young age. And this is what my mother taught me to be very independent at a very young age because she was young coming up in the streets also. Um, I remember vividly her getting up one day, taking me all the way to school from... On 74th to Hunt 10th Street, First Avenue, taking me to school. The next day, she took me all the way to the train station on Hunt 10th Street. Like, yo, you can get to the school, right? It's only like three blocks. The next day, she took me to Hunt 25th Street. It was like, you know, it was only two stops on the sixth train to the next stop. You get off and you get out and go to school. The next day, she took me to Hunt 49th Street. Like, yo, you know, you just got to take this to the Hunt 25th Street. Transfer over two stops, walk to school. It takes some money. If anything, call my phone. The next day, she woke up and gave me five dollars. Like, yo, you got it right. Hmm. I see you when you get back home from school. And this is in the '80s. This is about if I'm nine, I'm seventy-six. So this is eighty-five. You heard? I'm at nine years old, going to school by myself on 175th to Mount 110th and First Avenue. These are some of the lessons that my mom's taught me. At an early age, so I've been outside for a long time, fending for self. Okay, Mister the Big Apple. Well, first of all, like just turn the mic and put it close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop, stop playing around. Like what we're not gonna do is have you play around like this. So Get ahead, man. Thing. Stop playing. So you've been outside at a young age. When did you get a taste of the streets? Your first taste of the streets. The first taste of yeah, the like, streets. Yeah, like, like, you know, who did you look up to? He was in Harlem, right? He was going to Harlem. The, the, the first person I looked up to was my Uncle Ricky. He was hustling in the Bronx, since I can remember. Him and my mom's. It was a heavy crack era, and my mom's really had it. A lot of it. All of it. Mama Jones outside like that? Yeah, her boyfriend was the plug back then. No shade, though. It's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. what was, uh, so old, school, old school named Turk. Puerto Rican? Nah, black dude. Really? Vietnam vets. We used to have break the firing pins off of guns and let me play with them as toys. It's, it's a different different era. It's 84, 85. It's, it's a little bit different, bro. Life was a little bit different. So I've been through a lot of phases. By the time I got to Harlem, I was already prepped for what Harlem had to show me. But Harlem was a whole new thing for me and shit like that in that capacity as far as living there. You know what I mean? Like when I was going to school on the east side, I was something different. My aunt lived there, I grew up, and now coming to Harlem on the west side, and now I had to fend for self and learn something different was a whole new ball game. But one thing that I did know was that it felt like the streets was calling me. Like that shit was like, oh, I gotta get outside. This shit is different down here. It wasn't like the Bronx. From on the west side was like, it really paints a picture of 
the historic Harlem everybody talks about. The East Side gets money and all that, but when you go to the West Side, it's just like way different and shit like that. And then just and one thing led to another. I remember I used to be scared to <laughs> walk from my project building to my cousin's dope project building in the middle of Foster Projects, and I lived in Taft. And he used to call and make them come get me and walk with me all the way through his projects. And Doe was shorter than me, but he, he was way tougher than me at the time. I remember I called him one day. He like, I'm not coming to get you no more. What's wrong with you? With Doe Stack? Yeah, he like, you better walk through the projects yourself. What's wrong with you? You scared to fight if you got to fight? What's wrong with you? And that was my first lesson of aggression. Like, you got to man up. And from then on, and I was probably like eighth grade. What school? What schools you went to? We went to St. Anne's, me and Doe Stack. We went to Catholic school. Doe was bad since young, super bad. He got kicked out of Catholic school, maybe like sixth grade. Then they went to public school. Then him and God bless the dead DJ. They had the the uh, GCI. What's that? That's the name of the rabbit back then. They was like twelve years old, driving to school in the GCI rabbit. And they was hustling and getting money at twelve and thirteen. No lie, no cap, no no for real. Driving to school, seventh grade. In their own car. This was this was real Harlem back then. This is what Harlem was about. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm trying to be respectful, but are you are you you're not adding any blemish to that story? No, I'm not you? adding any blemish. You could ask anybody. You know anybody from the East Side of Harlem and know who DJ was and they know who Dose Stacks was. They I know tell Dose you Stacks. back in the day, them was really driving to school in the Volkswagen GCI, the, the little rabbit. Sh and you heard seventh 13, grade, thirteen, fourteen, seventh mm -hmm. grade, twelve, thirteen. Elementary school, like junior high school, not even high school, junior high school. This was on 109th between, uh, what's that, 2nd and 3rd Avenue, the elementary school they went to. And that was after he got kicked out of St. Anne's around the corner with me on 110th between 2nd and 1st Avenue. They was bad. DJ was super bad. DJ was the most advanced that we knew at the age 11 to 12 because he really was getting outside, getting crack money and selling packs of cracks and really... Getting, he was coming through with motorcycles at 14 and 15. Like, DJ Hustle was way different. God bless, he got killed at like 16, I believe, something like that. So there's a few characters in Harlem that we all was the same age, but they was way advanced. And when you next to somebody that's advanced like that, you tend to learn a little bit faster. Mm. You mentioned a few minutes ago, you said you said that, that was when Harlem was real, like the real Harlem. Not, I mean, this this is what the epitome of Harlem. Like, right, right. I'm not saying that's, I'm just saying that's what Harlem was. That's the epitome of Harlem. Young coming up. And growing up way too fast. You think Harlem is still like that now, or you think it's a little, it's a little different? I mean, everything has changed, but as far as the idea of what Harlem is, yeah, the young is outside very early right now. It's way different. You dig? The, mm -hmm. the, the lay of the land is way different, but the young is still outside of the very, very early age. I don't know if they capitalizing like we were. I don't know if they were money oriented like we are, which it doesn't seem. I think they more worried about the ops than they worry about making some money. When we were coming up, we were taught to make that dollar. You was a cold scrub, you was a poop putter. If you wasn't coming out side making no money, if you couldn't get no new sneakers every every week from off that pack money, if you didn't have the new sweatsuit, the nautical suit, you was looked at as a scrub. It wasn't it wasn't on no dirty. Shit. You had to be fly. That's what Harlem was about. I'd rather be fly with no money in this pocket. You heard? That's the Harlem way, for real. Like you heard? Thousand dollar outfit on back in the day with twenty dollars in his pocket. I got five dollars on a on a dime. That dime gonna roll you five bloods. You heard? What's wrong with these. At what age you started smoking, Cabo? <laughs> Fifteen. And you never stopped from then. Was it ever like when I was like 16, 17, I had stopped, thought I was gonna play basketball, then I ended up getting kicked out of school and I started again. What school in in what high school did you go to? I went to Cardinal Hayes High School until I got kicked out of my senior year with your man Zeke, he got kicked out on the first day, on the last day of school, the same day. But I was pretty grown at that time, so I went to school by myself, and he had, had to come with his mother. <laughs> he kicked me out, and he kicked him out of his job. He was like, y'all two are terrible, bro. Uh, but so, yeah, that's my crime you right there, on man Zeke. So when you, all right, so you outside, you in Harlem, you young. You said Doe at 13, 12, Doe was doing, you know, riding. I, it, it's, the story is still fascinating to me. I'm going to ask him. <laughs> I can't wait till you ask him. I'm going to ask him. He's at 12, 13. Yeah, 12, 13. Going to school? Yeah, driving. Come on, man, please. But <laughs> Carson City. 
You know, Sin City? I know Sin. I'm not calling like Sin. They, we all from the same area. We all from that area. That's we all grew up together. So I'm Doe was one you. of them. Doe and Doe DJ. was outside. Mm-hmm. Sin was outside early, too. We all was outside. We all grew up with each other. Some of was just more advanced. East side was definitely what, what, was different. What, and what West were you, side is a whole move with it. East side <laughs> is just something different. Like, but, what, so, and what were you focused on at that time? Your school. Get your work done. I mean, school is something that you train to do at that time. There like, you, no matter what, everybody went to school back in the day. Like, hey, we ain't going to say nick. Just cutting and shit. Got older and shit like that. But take your ass to school in the mm-hmm. morning. Like, this is when parents was really parenting and shit like that. Even though there was a lot of freedom and did what they did. But you mm-hmm. had to go to school. And a lot of us had to go to church and all this type of shit. Just before it was bloods in the city. And then, and all be, like, all that shit you did. Like, half the in Harlem, like if you blood and then some of them is Crips, them them been in each other refrigerators and shit like that. Like it, they, they, you know what I mean? Like it started way before it was this. You know what I mean? Like so, it's a lot to it, man. You just got me going back in the days, all type of. Shit. Where was mom at this time, though? At this time, because you know now you said mom, mom, my mom lived in the Bronx, but so she, mom, she still was in the Bronx. Yeah, she was doing a lot of different things. Yeah, mom is, 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 is a unique shout individual. Shout out to Mama Jones, I love her to death. You know, she be pressing me and stuff like that about doing a skit, and she she had somebody <laughs> yeah. like some type of manager, some guy. Yeah, my tell mom's, him, my tell mom's him stop. A, my tell him stop pressing me. Different type of lady, man. She yeah. she survived a lot of errors and, and and did well at it. You know what I mean? Like I know a lot of people from her era. That's was there gone. anybody? Hold on, G. Was there anybody when you were younger in the streets that you looked up to at a young age, like hustlers? Like who did y'all look up to? I, <laughs> Um, you know, back then, a lot of people took a different route. But who? My Uncle Ricky I looked up to when I was coming up. My Uncle Avery, God bless the dead, I looked up to. There's a guy that right now is, that's in the feds right now. His name was Chad. He was from Weeks Avenue and shit like that. He ended up being one of the biggest drug dealers I can remember and shit like that. Um, he had a brother named Los that ended up killing himself playing Russian roulette on, in, in the 80s and shit like that. But then, then coming to Harlem, there's a lot of I looked up to as hustlers and shit like that. I don't, I don't even know if I want to mention names because it's just like... So wacky out here right now and shit like that. I don't know where these is at. I don't know where they at. But hey, it was a time that when well, my uncle Avery was a, a a very big inspiration to me and shit like that. Like uh, he he grew up on 129th Street between Fifth and Madison Avenue, and I could recall remember having him having uh, they having crack lines down the block by the by the hundreds, like really down a whole block and chilling these with jums. This is at a very early age, and I remember him having hundred leather jackets. He always changed his clothes twice every day, hustling in the daytime, and and then come outside at nighttime with some fresh. The haircut was always on point. He always had the latest and the newest. Don't play with him. They was running around in Lex four doors, Lex two doors, like. It was getting to the getting to the bread. God bless my my uncle Blev. He's still running around. He just showed me. He just sent me a picture of the big, big uh Maybach that was there. Like your uncle's still out here moving. You talk about like <laughs> so, a couple of niggas in Harlem. I I I I got a chance to really enjoy watching and shit like that. And there's a couple of that I grew up next to that was really doing it. Like God bless the dead, my man. Like he was really getting to a super 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 bag. Like I remember oh, one day we in the tunnel. It's a couple stories, but I'm gonna say this. One day we in the tunnel. Irv Gotti and them is in there. That's when Irv Gotti and them was super balling. When when uh, Ja Rule was him. You heard. Mm. Like Seventy two bottles of Cristal. I oh mean, like, so what, 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 what? Like we broke, nigga, like from Harlem. Baby girl, baby girl, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Yo, buy me two bottles of Cristal. Send them they two bottles back, and then send them this two bottles, and tell them we from Harlem. We get money. What's wrong with these in here? You heard? Like, boy, that, 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 that light was different, bro. Light was getting to a real stupid bag. Like, running around with a hundred thousand in his book bag, like that. Like. My light was one of the inspirators. He's one of the that led me into doing the music and shit like that. And always used to encourage me in the very beginning, like '97 and '98, when Cam first started getting signed and shit like that. Like he really was one of the few people that was telling me to do it. Like you crazy? Just do it. That you in a great position. You heard? Like different era. God bless light. Or mm. a few other. Too much like that. Your, but. your uncle Ricky is your mother's brother, right? Yeah. Do do you did you have any um, you don't have any siblings, do you? Yeah, I got three sisters. Your sister, your sister. Sorry, no I got, brothers. I got four sisters. No brothers. Oh. I'm the okay. only boy. Okay. I got some good brothers though that I call my brother, but no biological. Uh, got no oh, brothers. Oh. 
Who did you meet first? <clears throat> Cam, Zeke. Like, you know, you met them around in high school, right? Or younger than that? Oh, I, met, I met Zeke first. I met Zeke when we was like in fourth grade in summer school. And he was robbing and pillaging then, robbing people for their money and going to people's bags, taking their money, and we just forged a relationship. Fourth grade, and I met him again in, in, in like ninth grade. We went to high school. His locker was right next to mine. I was like, that's you? And then from then it was on. I met Cam at like 13. They moved him from his grandmother to the east side. No, they moved him from uptown and, and the west side to his grandmother on the east side in 1199. That's where I grew up halfway going back to school, back and forth to school, elementary yeah, school on the east side with my aunt. And that's how me and Cam meet, met. And Cam was a big basketball player at the time. And where we lived at in 1199, there was a recreation center. We was kind of spo spoiled on the east side. We didn't live in the projects. We lived in a co-op high rise. So we had the basketball court, pool, all that. So we was very heavy on basketball. So when he came from the west side, that was a thing. Like, yo, that Cam coming over here, that like all American, that you know, this, this, like super, super, super nice in basketball. And I remember the first day going in the recreation center and really getting to see him play. And boy was, boy was going off. And then I had a cousin named Dave that was, just as nice as Cam, like the was really nice, but didn't have the basketball acumen in different tournaments as Cam. But that was like my that was like my backup power. Like, yo, Dave, you gotta come downstairs and cook this new on the block. And that's what it was. Me and Cam, we our relationship was very competitive from the moment we met each other, from basketball to getting fresh to everything on the block and shit like that. But we always had a dope bond whenever we was off the block. All the shit we do on the block was out the door. When we off the block, we'd move into one accord and shit like that. But me and Cam have a very, very competitive relationship. And then he had a cousin named Blood, Shay, God bless the dead. And Blood was always super, super stupid fly. Cam and Blood definitely came through on some fly. And Cam had a lot of that West Side flavor with him, that West Side drug dealer flavor with him and shit like that, coming to the coming to the East Side more. But we, from young high school and shit like that, from eighth, ninth grade, they went to college, they got kicked out, and then him and Mace came and lived with me in my grandmother's house. And that's where everybody started their career from, my grandmother's house. They said that, were you like in the in your grandmother's house alone? Because that's how they made it seem when you hear the stories. My grandmother passed away. I was there by myself. I was living it by myself. I was raising my sister for a minute until my mom took them all to Rochester and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And when my grandma passed away, she left me on the lease, so... I was there when they was coming back home. I didn't know they got kicked out of school at first. I just you know, pull up. And after a while, they like, yo, bro, I got kicked out of school. I can't let my grandmother know. And he just moved in with me. And when he signed this deal and got that money, he went and told his grandmother he got kicked out of school. But he got that check for becoming a rapper. So that was the balance right there. And then they started seeing the videos and all that shit, and they realized that Cameron was a very famous person. <laughs> Remember, Cameron has been a platinum artist out the box like that. You know, the music moves so fast and missed so many years, but I don't think people really give him the credit he deserves in this climate and shit like that. Because he was one of the few artists that put out platinum, multi-platinum records from the moment he signed. He's not a gold artist. You know what I mean? So he's definitely one of the uh, legends and the greats and the icons in this game. I give him that. Yes. I watched it. I know the whole story. Mm. So what was your like um first like intro to hip hop as far as you doing the music? Like what, what, what was your first like love for when you started to really feel like yo, all right, this is me. Like you started writing or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I always loved hip hop. I just wasn't a rapper and shit like that. I love hip hop from when collected hip hop magazines, sauce magazines, all that type of shit. Like I was a hip hop nerd. Like I studied every <laughs> bit of it. Rock Cam, LL Cool J, Juice Crew, anything like BDP. This was a hip hop glutton. Like I just loved it so much. The the music for me, I always loved the music. When Cam and them started doing music, I had I, I, I a light bulb went on in my head, like and when from them doing freestyles before I wasn't even thinking about no deal. From them doing freestyles on the streets, I was like, these are going to be super stupid nice. And this is where I wanna be. I like this environment. And I'm willing to do whatever I need to do to stay close and help them along with the journey. And then Cam Cousin Bloodshed had died. I put a little twist on it. Cam ended up getting a deal. And Cam always made sure that I 
did music from his very first album for me, my moms, and Jimmy. And at that time, I really wasn't rapping like that. They was t teaching me how to rap, and Mace, and Mace taught me how to actually rap. And then Cam would just help me with the whole my attitude with the rapping and shit like that. So I was like in rap school a little bit, mm -hmm. back and forth, even somewhat. I didn't really have to do it because I had some other shit I was doing at the time. And, and then as time went on, I just started seeing the money they was making. I started doing music slowly but surely, and it started sounding like something. You was doing what at the time? Huh. I was doing a lot of shit. Pull the mic close when you talk. <laughs> I'm about to be huh? talking about you. If you're going to sit back all like this with the mic. So nigga, you can hear you. I was doing a lot of shit at the time, man. A lot of a lot of a lot of odd jobs. Not to mention all the things I was doing for Cam at the time and shit like that. I got a chance to be video director. I got a chance to be security guard. I got yeah, a chance to be engineer. That. I got a chance to be manager. I got a chance to be every position you can ain't think of that an artist has to fill. I fulfill for Cam, and it worked for me. At what age did Killer get signed? What age? How old was he? Well, he was like nineteen. So he got signed in ninety seven. He graduated in ninety four. So nineteen twenty, I believe it was. Ninety-seven, and when he got signed, he was living at your crib. He was living, at yeah. the, you know. One thing I like about you know the situation with you, Cam and him, is that um, regardless of what it, it it goes back to, it's the epitome of not leaving your behind. If you understand what I'm saying, mm -hmm. like regardless of what it is, is like you guys. You know, you see Mace, you see Killer, you see yourself. No matter how it played out, everybody kept their work, and that's all. That's that, at the, at me looking back. There you go. You know what I mean, like we may not have, I may, I may not have liked some shit that Ken may have did. Ken may have not liked some shit that Mace may have did. Like, but and all in all, everybody did their job. You heard? Mace got Cam the deal. Cam got me the deal. We couldn't ask for no much more. Would we like for it to maybe play it out some other way? You think about that a, a thousand ways and shit like that. Yeah, but. Reality is, we all became rich and famous and was able to do things that we would never been able to do without all of us together putting that work in and everybody holding a word and being accountable. And that's what they did. Let me ask you a question because I know you was around at this time when, when, when Killer. In retrospect, now that you look back at it, at it, when Killer, when um, Mace charged Killer to uh, do the video and that whole situation, at the time, you didn't like that because that was weak. That was weak at the time. Nah, that was weak right now. Oh, hold on, hold on. Come on, Cabo. That's weak right now. Hold on, Cabo. You don't get hurt. That. It's weak right now. I know I could call multi platinum artists right now. Like, I need a record. You know, send me the record. Yo, I want, I want need to get the video done. You know, I, uh, shit, I'll be free this day. Let's do it. And they're going to pull up and get the video done. Like, that's just. Can like, you compare it now to back then, though, Cabo? 100%. It's, 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 I'm just saying the way you're supposed to handle yourself in this game when you got certain relationships with certain people. It's, a, it's like an unwritten rule was per se is like that you know what i mean like it's one hand washes the other pretty much and shit like that so no matter if no matter what his reason is your mind would be already made up like it's, it's whack especially your experience it's no way you look back at it and say yo i kind of got that why you did that i kind of I mean, understand i'm not saying i'm not saying like it's not artists that don't pay for it like that but if it's your man you definitely not expecting your man to try to charge you thirty grand to get in the video, and that's supposed to be your man like that. Like, Cam would never charge me to get in the video. Joels would never charge me to get in the video. You heard? Unless I'd be like, "Yo, I got the stupid budget. I'm about to throw you like thirty for this shit." And like, you did? Like, that's different. And we do that too. You heard? Okay. But the way he do it, the way he did it was crass. That wasn't right. So. Something wrong with you? That's my opinion. And, I, and I'm, I only one, I'm opinion. only one man. You heard? I'm telling you how I feel. You have been very, you're very passionate and stuff like that when it comes to things like that, and you express yourself. So, I guess with you is more principle, but you know, and and, and and sometimes I feel like when I watch you, man, you just <laughs> you type of, you go down with the whole burn. If you mad, the whole gonna burn. Out. I don't give a. F I'm going down. I don't care. I'm mad. Relax, man. You got to look at things from a retrospect ideology sometimes. I ch I ch ideology. <laughs> I changed a lot. You have? Yeah. There, there's been a lot of times when I was willing to let, I was willing to let this burn, per se. You know what I mean? I'm a very emotional person, so a lot of this I wear on my sleeve. But through the grace of God and me getting a little bit older, and you know, 
you, you, you seem to change and make smart decisions. How, how many videos did you produce? A lot of people don't know that you you were you was what, what is it called? Is it executive? What, what is it called with the video? Directors. Directed. Directed. Yeah, directed. I mean, I've directed tons and tons of videos. Don't say tons. You directed like six. <laughs> Never. You're stupid. But I'm talking about back in the day. Before, like, why you gotta talk to me like that? I'm back about, in the days. What are you talking about? We're not talking so about. I that. started directing videos from the old boy video. That was the very first video I, that I directed. I know. So count all the rest of the videos from there. Mm. <laughs> and any video you've seen from me, any video you've seen from me from there, I've directed. Not to mention a whole host of other. I like, did Remy Ma videos, uh, state property videos. Uh, uh, or so they call you for, for to, to do the videos, or you, you just got a relationship with them, and you in the room, they're like, yo, we need your assistance. Nah, people, I mean, well, I don't <laughs> promote me directing videos like right, I right. used to back in the day, but back in the day, yeah, they used to source me out like any other video director. Like, yo, I need to get Jim Jones to direct this video. Like, uh -huh. Remy Ma, I wish she gave me a stupid budget to direct a video. We did the, we did the stupid video. Uh, like, that's, but now I don't promote it as much but I direct all the videos and then most of the, my artist videos and you know what I mean like I direct all those let me guess it was your vision they saw something you saw you had an eye for it it's all your point of view so you gotta why you gotta be very keen on what you want people to see as you being an artist oh boy was fire video you did uh I think you did the uh, diplomatic immunity did all of those videos uh, dipset anthem the eight, 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 all of those videos all the diplomat videos I did most of the can videos I did Really? Mm -hmm. Your name be on the credit? Yeah. I don't know. Was it Joseph Jones? I don't, what is it like? I gotta look for it, man. Cause are you getting uh, residuals? Did you do your paperwork? You don't get residuals from videos, but you do get a check when you do it. And you got it. You know, the director usually gets like twenty percent of the budget. Or <laughs> the production team usually get get like thirty percent of the budget. It's a little setup and shit like that. Are you gonna let me direct the video for you? I mean, if you got the right type of treatment and I feel you can pull it off, why not? That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. I, I, I don't like. I don't like the way you said that. Like, <laughs> he, he pay attention to him because he's very careful because he know I hold him to his words. So he's gonna say mm -hmm. treatment and stuff like that. He should just say, "I got you, Flip. You could do that." You know nah, if you are gonna do it, you gotta do it right. What are you talk? <laughs> you gotta fill in all the boxes, baby. You gotta, <laughs> your production value gotta be worth something. Um, very, very important. You got. You got yeah. So back to the back to the music, right? Um, take us back to the time when you kind of like knew you were nice, like you you knew you had it. I, I know you said they helped you with the with the rap and mace up. Dot Cam gave you like the, the the tough and you know what I'm saying. Like, but when did you know like, all right, this this is this is it right here. Like, I, I got this. This is what I want to do. You know what I'm saying. I just start. I just start figuring out. I got it. Nah. <laughs> um. What was that moment? Like you was like, all right, or, or who was I, the person who like co-signed you? The, well, a few people who co-signed me. I remember. Uh, Clark Kent was one of the early people that told me to Shout keep to rapping Kent. after doing a freestyle of Hot 97 with Cam and all the un and all of them was upset that Cam let me freestyle and shit like that because they didn't think that I was nice at the time and Clark Kent was like, boy, you went crazy on that shit. Don't let these shit, man, don't know no music. You keep <laughs> rapping. And shit, little shit like that and it was like a record I did one day when Philly had to, there was a Philly all-star game and shit like that and everybody left me and I stayed in the Rockefeller Studios baseline at the time and recorded a record and it came out crazy and then a whole bunch of other shit to the story but I ended up, long story short, I ended up driving all the way to Philly to play Camden record and shit like that because that was my first time I completed a full record mm. and it was dope and then after that I just kept the same the same method I did to create that record and started creating more records and then how was it being signed? Like, so, this would confuse me when you hear the stories going to Rockefeller and stuff like that. Was the tension pause thick in there? Was it really? Not pause? in the beginning. It was cool in the beginning. Yeah. When they did all that vice president and all that shit is when everything just started going haywire. So, yeah, first got in there, everybody was cool. Everybody was Yeah, friendly. everybody was cool. It was mixing and mingling, state property, diplomats, Rockefeller, bleak. Beans, everybody, everybody's all in the studio making music together. Pete Fun cracking days. them, it was, mm -hmm. it was dope, a hundred dope. And then, and then Dame did that. Dame did did that, and that kind of caused a lot of confusion inside that building. And we don't know all the ins and outs of what was going on at the time. So there's a lot of other shit going on on a boss level that us as artists or new people coming in had no idea 
was already brewing. So <clears throat> I do believe when that shit happened, that shit caused a lot of confusion. And I, you know, that was the start of the public being able to see that it's getting rocky over there. And they really charged the price if, if you guys talked about anybody like Jay or anybody, there was a fine, yes? Like when Cam said that there was a fine, if he said anything about. Yeah, I mean, that's all technical. Back in the day with lawyers, mm -hmm. I don't remember how that go, but I do believe it was some type of gag. Like that. <laughs> I can't tell you exactly how that go. It was a lot of different stupid, silly going on when that was happening. I'm glad that it all worked out, though. Yeah, we, we happy. So, when did Jewel's come into the picture? Like 99? Jewel's been around since like 99. Jewel's used to go to the tunnel with us, so he's been around for a minute. Who met him first? Cam. Hmm. My man Toe Cobain. Toe went to school with Cam and Toe went to school with me. But um, that was that's Toe, I think it was his neighbor, one of his good friends, but he's younger than all of us and shit like that, but grew up with Tobe nevertheless, and then at that time we was already rapping Tobe, called Cam, guess Cam went up to the block, started going crazy, I remember Cam coming back to the house that night, like, yo, is this young that's going crazy, he might be what we need for real, this <laughs> is going to go crazy, or, and around that time we was uh, <clears throat> in the midst of losing the entertainment deal, so we was kind of on our own trying to figure it all out, uh, I was like 99, and it's the same year they, they, they actually closed the tunnel and shit like that. Then turned 2000, I believe Dame started managing and Cam went from managing to Dame offering and Cam to jail at Rockefeller. Then I believe Dave Cam did that. Then he did the uh, paid in full move. He got that. And after that, it was like Cam was back on guard status and shit like that. He could do no wrong. And after that, got the diplomat deal. And after that, Joel's. Went, went into guard status, and after that, the diplomats was born. It was a no coming back. Mm. Speaking of Joel, I, I seen an interview somewhere where you said that's one of your favorite rappers. Yeah. Joel Santana. Mm -hmm. What do you rate him at, like, as far as, like, <clears throat> like hip-hop? You know, people always put these other artists at their top five. Like, is, is Joel's in top five? Yeah, Joel's always going to be my top five. What is it about Jewel that 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 you that you like it's so much? Personal, it's it's more per, it's personal to me anyway because I watched him grow up. But literally, mm -hmm. that boy is uh, a savant when it comes to doing music and shit like that. Like I I've, I watched him and shit like that when he was a young age and just creating monsters and shit like that. And the way that he does music and it's just dope. You know what I mean? And everybody goes through what they go through. So you know, he had a, a bit of a minute where he, you know what I mean? So we never really get to see Jewel's full potential. So. Right now, I'm more excited than anything to see him actually back in the studio. He got some crazy records and shit like that. And I do believe music is like a jump shot. I tell everybody, the more you shoot it, the more that shit gonna go in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he's been doing music con constantly in and out, getting a uh, DJ drama mixtape together and shit like that, which he got some bombs on. I just was looking, listening to a record that he got me, Meek, and Rowdy Rebel on. Shit is retarded. Mm -hmm. Do you so when you started coming into your own, then you start off that's such that purpose. <laughs> they got a purple arm brothers and he thought he was Cody. <laughs> Man. Remember that? Yeah, like what, what how that how that whole <laughs> size bulb and all and like how that whole thing how did that start? Over we New Year's Eve of nineteen ninety nine on on the hill on 145th Street, trying to get an outfit and looking for an ounce of Purple Haze at that time. That was when Purple Haze was really stupid and we was trying to go to the tunnel and all this shit. And Shice was in the store on 145th. He like, yo, what's good with y'all? He like, yo, I got the smoke right now. He gave us a dub, he like, gave us a sample, like, here, smoke that, let me know when they hit my phone. Boy, I got that shit, I got that, I got all of it. Smoke that shit, I remember I had Cam Benz, me and Joel smoked that shit on the west side, on the FDR Drive, going up to a Dykeman. Because we trying to go to Dykeman to go see who else has some shit up there. By the time we got to the end of the Dykeman, we like, ooh, we got that boy! Oh. U-turn, calling that, like, yo, yeah, where you at? And like, pull up. And from that moment on is when Purple City started. 
And Shice was at a very pivotal time for Dipset and shit like that. And I, in, in more than one way, not just music, but that Purple Haze was... <laughs> made a lot of money off Purple Haze and shit like that at that time. And that's when weed wasn't legal and <laughs> was selling that shit for damn near $7,000 a pound. And just to get it in Ohio, all type of shit back in the days and shit like that. But, Oh, bless weed is legal now, so things are a little bit different. But yeah, purple purple haze was you can't name the album, but I, album after it is like that. Um, that was the chronic of the East Coast was the purple haze, like so. That's what Chase was responsible for introducing purple city to the masses. So that purple bur- haze to the masses. So and then the bird gang came from you. Yeah, bird gang was the subsidiary of diplomats. We were. We know what it was, quote, man, but, quote, you know. quote unquote special forces. <laughs> what you mean special forces? You know what the fuck I mean. What you mean? Like you was so why you call it bird gang then? Because of the bird on the diplomat? On on the on the logo? Mm-hmm. Cause the diplomat logo was the bird. But that wasn't birds. <laughs> no, that wasn't a bird, that was an eagle. That was an eagle on the back of a dollar. He was about making money. Still about making money. Kind of aggressive. It's all about a dollar. It isn't. What I'm trying to say is that where the name come from, it just came in your head. What, the Diplomats? No, I no, no, Burgang. Oh, Burgang. It started from that. No, it started from Jewel's. Uh, Berg, the Berg, the Burgang, when I said, um, Kurt Cobain, how that shit go? That Kurt Cobain was here. Yeah. Hold on. For the long before that. The whole Burgang is here. That Kurt Co- He He mm. said that shit. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm taking it. <laughs> so then now, like, Dwells, Dwells came up with Dipset too. Like, remember, it was Diplomats. And then in one of his rhymes, he said Dipset. We was like, oh, duh. That shit is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Word. So, so. You do the you, you thought the Purple City Bird Gang. I remember that whole wave. You had but it was Bird Gang. We Burger. added the Purple City because of Shice and shit like that. Shice, so he yeah. was a subsidiary of Bird, Bird Gang. gang. You Got know it. What I mean? So he was like, I was Bird Gang, and then Shice started to do music on top of whatever else he was doing and shit like that. So we was like naming the whole Purple City, and we got Purple City Bird Gang. And that's where we started to direct it and all that type of shit. Got it. Got it. Started Shice Bub career. Shice Bub was smarter than most people that was around me at the time because a lot of the was around me, but they couldn't find their purpose when I had the most power in the world and shit like that. Shice knew what he was doing. He ended up getting multiple deals and shit like that, record deals at the time. In the midst of the shit. You know what I mean? And a lot of just sitting around just trying to look good for the camera and not really, you know what I mean? So I tip my hat to Shice. Hold on. Doing that. You, had, you had something called Purple Bull. Did, did, did you, was you inspired by it? By a purple city. I see, I see you got it. I stole it from them. I stole it from yeah. You stole it? You stole, it? You stole it from them. I'm thinking like, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 he had yeah. something called Purple Bull. I even like that video. So they, yeah, years ago. And yeah. like it all, man. <laughs> Shice Bob. Yeah, you know I'm the veteran. 12th grade. That shit was fire. That I know my homegirl Peaches was in that video. Cold. That's why. Cold. That was a cold record. I went to school with mm. Peaches. And Peaches was in that video. And I remember her talking about it. I'm like. That's crazy. Yeah, but. Hold on, hold on. Jam, G. That's L. You right I had to go back to. Yeah, I'm like, Purple Bull. <laughs> so, so Cabo, let me ask you a question. Who? Hold on now. Uh, let me check you, Cabo. Let me double check you in. You know? that's, that's that's strike two. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> when, when? Who? So now I'm gonna be careful here because you 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 know you get very little confusing when you start to talk and you start to get aggressive. So when you started to look for members of Bird Gang, let's just keep it like. You, how long you knew? Yeah, see, he's don't smile. All right. Man. Mel? Okay, you don't talk about Mel neither? Yeah, you can talk about Mel. When did you meet Mel? Um, met Melly about 97, 98. Um, Melly was just pushing the line very hard, and I, at that time, it was heavy into my, heavy into my blood, and... Melly was the Billy that was pushing the line very hard at the time at a young age and shit like that. He still was a teenager. I had a mutual friend at the time that wanted to introduce me to him and shit like that. And well, we I'm, know we know I'm, you don't promote gangs, but you, you joined Blood at what age? Me? No, me. Yes, you. 
Oh man, um, you could at least say that combo. Kind of, like, what age you join? It? Nineteen, something like that. Nineteen. Did you, did, you, did you have to go through the ritual? Did they have rituals back then, like jump in and do the three things on your arm and all that? You had to go through that? Yeah, Harlem, they had their own little sh that they used to do with like that. But you know, Harlem was way different from California, so it was a lot of different ways you could get in. I was very aggressive in my hood and sh like that. And um, the big dogs at the time were my that we used to go always out and party. And I was getting a lot of trouble at that time. I always be fighting, <clears throat> ooting, and all type of other dumb sh and sh like that. So. One thing led to another thing, and um, very aggressively, I was told, when you see us, you throw it up, blood. <laughs> yeah, you heard. There you go. You heard. There ain't no, don't. When you see us, you throw it up, blood. That's it, blood. You out here putting it in more. I just, and we ain't got to get into the rest of it. Of course, of course. That's how it started, like that. When did you meet Stack? Um, How did you meet Stack? I met Stack one time at Babalu's. He had a big blue fur. Hmm. And he came, ran down at me, like, yo, my name's Stack, pulling on from the back. Yo, just talking, man, aggressive. I'm like, who oh boy? They, you know, at, 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 he was like, ah, cool. And then I heard a, I heard a, I heard a record on the radio. Hello, you love Cam and that dip set? I know you don't love me. I know you don't love. He remember he did that freestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Don't you don't love me?" What mine's under the threshold? This, who is this? I like this young man. I'm like, "Oh, that's the same young from the Babalu." And they were like, "Oh, damn, well, there's a storm and all this type of." Shit. I'm like, "Well, guess what? Tell him pull up to the studio. I got a proposition for him." Just like that. Mm -hmm. He pulled up, mm -hmm. and he left the studio. Bird Gang. Off that one record you heard on the radio. It wasn't the radio. I think it, it was. It was you said you said he heard on the radio. radio. He, was, he did a freestyle to the Fifty Cent <coughs> record, and Flex was playing all his music. Well, it was the rock. The threat show. I, it was it the was, rock. I, I, I kept it, hearing it, the rock, and I'm like, is this rock a Rockefeller artist? Because he mm. was saying the rock. I didn't know what it was and shit like that. Right. And I was like, this is vicious. Then I remember he said, I know you love Cam and that dip set. Mm. Baby squad downs, it's respect to my click. click. I, I know you don't love me. I know you don't love me. I was like, nah, enough is enough. Find him. And they was like, yo, he does a storm and all that shit. I'm like, but what is they doing with him? Like, they not, they mm -hmm. oh, now we bugging. Be, be easy, mm. be easy. Just stop, be easy. What happened? Easy, like, <laughs> come on, you just can't be just talking about other people's deals. Let's worry about yours. All right. I'm telling you what went on. I'm <laughs> like, what the f is Clue doing? This is too hot. He is the mm. next thing. Like, them, yo, bugging. Did you get on the phone with Clue and talk to Clue about it? Or you just did some old school 93 shit? I ended up speaking to Clue after um, Stack spoke to him and shit like that. A brief conversation and shit like that. You dig? You still say you dig. So you kept it brief. With us. Was it brief or did you, like, you just, it was an understanding amongst men, basically? Yeah, it was cool. It wasn't no, never like no turmoil or any of that type of shit. It just was a decision that Stax had made at the time that he felt would be beneficial to his career, which it was. You know, you was there, you yeah. was on tour, you know what we was moving was. to, you know what Stax was about to do. He was front line. He was. About to shine. Well, let me let me say this real quick. So people got mad at me, um, because they said I interviewed an ex member, um, and I feel like the the picture that was painted of you is wrong. Um, and let me just it's gonna be a little long winded, but allow me. A lot of people thought that you know when you went independent and when you had it, that you just made it really look good. And a lot of people don't. I mean, you had it, but you made it look good. And a lot of people don't know that you really extended yourself to a lot of individuals that came out there. So when I hear these stories, and Bino get mad all the time about it, um, one of the things is that, you know, I interviewed Zsa and she said those stuff, and people people were upset at me, like, feel like you gonna let Zsa talk about Jim like that, and stuff like that, but I was correcting the things of she what had, I... She had a bit of a bitter soul and a lot of misplaced anger, so I'm not even mad at her and shit like that for, for looking back at, at, at retrospect and shit like that, like, like, like you used to say. Um, she could I felt she could express whatever she wanted a little bit different because as you know i made sure that all of y'all was good as i said for a lot of y'all from far rock to 
come to meet up with stacks and plane tickets, all type of shit. So you know how I was moving. I made sure everybody was moving on one accord, not to mention all the energy that I started putting into her and the money I started putting into her from the videos to the balling and all this type of shit. Like, Drinking on? Just like, just, you know what I mean? Like, so, but you got to talk about that shit happens, man. It's part of the history, man. You know what I mean, I mean, I, did she do that wrong in my opinion? Yeah, I believe. The, do I think she would have been a successful person in the music industry? Wholeheartedly. You know what I mean? But I think that the death of Stax and the death of Holly at that time, and there was a lot going on. It was a, it kind of spooked out her, her socks and shit like that, and then everything was going on with the, with the kid Max and him getting locked up. It was just a lot. You know what I mean? So, But, th but this is the thing about it, and I, and I want to say this. The problem is, and, and I'm a, when she was on the show, she had said that she had heard about you wasn't giving Stack money, but people don't know that. When Stack asked you for the bread, you were going to the bank. I think the bank was closed. Something happened because me and Bino talked about it. I remember being there, and you was going to give him more money after the money he spent because we was on tour. He yeah. like, oh, geez, I spent all that tour money, geez, I'll I pop, I'll bug it. Whatever he did, brought another Porsche, BMW. You're like, yo, pop, geez, you said you said close, closed mouth don't get fed, geez, I'm pop, geez, I'm hurting. It's a fact. And, and when I told him, I said, yo, go get 25 grand from the bank tomorrow. He like, oh, shit. Yo, what's up with that Wrangler truck? I'm like, I left that shit in Brooklyn. I don't even want that shit. I don't even know what block is on. Matter of fact, it's by the, the car shop where I got the Maserati from. He like, you let me get that, G's. I'm like, go take it. You probably got to get a new key. He like, oh, I'm going to go get that tomorrow, G's. You different, G's. And we all know the rest of the story. Why do you think that people have this misconception of what happened? Why do you think even her? Why do you think that? Where did that come from? Because Nobody likes to hear the truth. Because we were there. Bino get mad all the time, and he, he gets offended, and he was one of the people that called me. He was like, that's not true. They think that, what they think is that Stack asked you, to, he told you he wanted to leave. They said that Stack told you he wanted to leave, he wanted to move, or, and you didn't move him out. But that's not true. You don't want to hear, you want to hear that story? All right, for Stacks and them, I was about to buy Stacks to get Max and Melly a whole brownstone in New Jersey. None of them wanted to leave the hood. And I was not about to waste my money. And I was what I offered them. I went shopping for the shit and all that type of shit. Yeah, we remember you know that, I mean? right, Bass? We remember that. Shout out to Bass. We remember you know the conversation. I mean? And I'm like, yo, you bugging. You you want to, like, um, you could go to the hood every day, but you're going to be living in Jersey. Like, you're going to be living better than, your, like, you heard? And you don't have to worry about paying for no rent or nothing like that. I'm just trying to get you out the hood. Melly, too. And Melly ended up getting shot, right? Like, like none of these would listen. And everything that happened... That, I, that you know can happen in the hood end up happening and shit like that. You know what I mean? But everything to try to protect them for what I know could have happened to them, I tried. You heard? From getting all them cars to getting all these... Everything, everything. You can imagine everything. Private jets, Miami, hundreds of thousands in one weekend, two tall buses, Atlanta. Like, cannot front on how I had my boys moving. And I'm only talking about this because you was there and you and Stax were best friends, were Bino, couple others and shit like that. Other than I don't even talk to people about stacks and, and what went on, but we were sending out. It was not on our level when we was moving in no way, shape, or form. And we was bullying and doing what we wanted to do, and that's wholeheartedly. And when no rappers could tell me nothing, I don't give a f who you ask. Okay, who you say was a tough guy at that time? It wasn't tough enough. And you could go down the line and go ask him. So all the shit that we talking about right now, I'm gonna eat something, bro. Like, you it's puppies to me, bro. Like, I just be sitting back laughing. Like, you would not like me to go backwards at all. You heard? I'm not going to, but you not with me on no levels when I was outside moving on the court, especially now Bird Gang. And I mean that from every level. You heard? Like, and everybody knows that, bro. Like, this is not rocket science. It's, it's not, what? you Like, nobody did what I did in this city and how I did it in the city. I don't care about what everybody else did. I did mine the way I wanted to do mine. And I did what the f I wanted. And anybody beg to differ, tell them holler at me. I did what I wanted in this city. Am I proud of it? Eh, not too much. But that was a time that I was doing something that I thought was called for, and it worked for me. You heard? Mm -hmm. But when you talk about sensationalizing what you do, like I could go all day and tell you no. some wild shit. You heard? Is I can I I can run down the line of all your favorite rappers about how these I like, like these don't be tough, bro. Do you feel like that? Do you feel like by you not talking because you really don't care? I guess right. He doesn't care. Um, shooter, a lot of people that know Capo Black, 
And I, cause I remember, let me just say this to the people that don't know. Bino, Bino and I drove to Miami with about 400 ecstasy pills in the trunk and a Honda. And then we, and then, and then we went to Miami in the, in the, so he was going to fly Bino and them out there, mm -hmm. yo, get on the plane. He said, whoever else, I think he had two more tickets. Now, Bino said that I couldn't make it at that time because something was webbing them. So Bino said, I'm going to drive down with you. So we switched to Honda. We drove halfway. Then we got into the Scion. So I remember going there, and I remember us being in a place. That's when me and, you know, stacked last time in Miami, but we was arguing then. Mm -hmm. and, but I remember watching Jim, how he, how he showed love to everybody, and he and he he walked the streets with everyone. So sometimes I get offended mm -hmm. because and I'm arguing with people, and that's why and I get mad at Bino. Like, why you don't speak? Like, you was there more than me. I watched him. I, I watched him. Invite me to the Shore Club, and I'm in the Solange's in there. I'm, you know, I'm jumping in the water. I'm jumping in the water, splashing. Like, who was it? I was in Rick James. I met Rick James' daughter, Todd James, through Bino. I went upstairs. I went James. Like, I remember these things. Nigga, and that's we did. We I was treating the Shore Club like it was a condo. Exactly. Talk about it. How many? I didn't stay nowhere else. We so, but when I'm, we didn't stay nowhere else but the Shore Club. But here's the question to you: Do you feel like? By you not talking and people have this issue with you that you leave everybody. I don't. Why do you let people come up with these stories? All this shit sound preposterous, especially. And I told y'all this. Like, it's, it, and you just don't say nothing. You could just easily nip it in the bud with that was there. We seen it. We seen. Of course, I feel like people. And I told the, the Hassan Campbell this when I interviewed him. Mm -hmm. I feel like people put too much on Capo. They don't realize. Yeah, Yo, you could sit, sit, you could sit there, Dice. Yeah, yeah. Sit next to Capo if you. I feel like people don't realize that my man. Was doing a lot. This was was flying mad outside. He was paying for the hotels. He was doing everything. What did y'all expect him to do? Mm -hmm. And what budget did you think my man had? And on top of that, he was following like it was like seventeen people out there plus they mans. <laughs> no, for real. So and 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 I just don't. I kind of blame you, you for it. Though, I was doing quarter million on the weekend sometimes with these little because there'd be so many of us. Twenty hotel rooms in the short club, like that. Renting condos in Miami for these for 31 days. Renting mansions for Miami in these 31 days. These had luxuries beyond belief, and I did that because I knew where I came from in this game. These didn't do nothing for me. You heard? Like these, they always said the game was to be told, not sold. I was like, what? I mean, to be sold, not told. I was like, what? I'm putting my on there. Everything I know about this, and we mobbing in this. You heard? We coming through in this. Well, why you don't say nothing? That's the point I'm trying to ask you. Why do you let them run with that narrative? To the narratives is what make. The people come up with these perceptions, which is not true. So I'm arguing that you're not saying anything. Biden no arguing you're I not saying anything. I was told a long time ago, the less you talk, the more they listen. <laughs> the less you talk, the more they listen. So you you let people run with a you like that flash, I, right? I'm, let, well, let me, well, I remember. Oh, I don't want that, like that joke, you cracking jokes. I remember I mean, when. This is serious. This is, it, it, but let, 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 let's keep, a lot of people don't know about this, but let me just tell you, share a story. Let me share a story with y'all. I remember when, when Chinks came home, rest in peace, he went to Jim's studio. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting next, and Bino got mad at him after that, and I remember being there. But Chinks is sitting next to Cabo, Cabo sitting there, and he had a stack, something, a stack painting on so, and, and Capo's being understanding, so Chink's asking him, like, what's up with my man? Capo look around. And he started, you know, he didn't say too much, but, you know, how much he cared about Stack and stuff like that. And he, he asked him again, and Capo got up and walked away. Like, like that. Like, like now you don't have to explain nothing, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to explain nothing. But I remember Bino being mad at, at like, why would, you, why would you do that? Like, you don't know what's going on. And it's because... Capo allowed these narratives to be painted and not say nothing. Now, of course, you just come over prison. You have no right to ask me questions in my studio. Rest in peace of my brother. Mm. And he, we always laughed about that and talked about that. Yo, Capo just got up. Capo wasn't even, he, he used to laugh about it. Like, man, Capo just got up. Because he did. He asked him twice. Because he just came home. I was letting them live. More sense to live. Not like I was letting them live. But you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I was giving him some grace and shit like that. I know he... Didn't understand what he was saying and shit like that. I didn't, he didn't know he was definitely in the devil's den at that time. So I was just like, we, we, I, I, you did. And that was the last conversation I had with him. I remember, I remember him being a trap in the elevator with us. God bless him and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And it was so uncomfortable for him. It 
And in that situation, I said, now nah, you good. I'm not going to do nothing to you. Straight. You heard? Like, Chef of Stacks, you good. But he was, that was when we was in the height of the whole French Montana. Yeah. But he said that. He said that I was in the He said that. Uh, he said they almost got me one time. He said that. He said that. He talked about that. That's one thing about Ching's recipes. Not my almost. If we wanted them, we would have ate them up. You heard? But I told him. All right, easy. You heard? Like, you good. Easy. Like, but, but what I'm saying, when I say almost, meaning like it's a figure of speech. Obviously, you go into an elevator, you somewhere, you see somebody that in the height of something, and you know, but I that would have looked. I, I you know. told him, bro, you good, bro. You, I, I told him, you good. You straight, bro. He had it was. He walked in the elevator with seven of us. He said that. He talked about it. You heard? He said, "What's up, Capo?" And it's, I said, "You good? You straight?" And he turned around and just waited for him to get off the floor, elevator and got out the elevator. But I did that on the strength of Stax. I know how much Stax loved him. Stax used to call that nigga, used to call Stax every day while we was on tour and put me on the phone with him and shit like that. You heard? So when he came home at that time, it had threw me off that day. And I was like, and I'm looking at the face, I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm going to go sit down. I remember that. get out of there because I know, I already know, I already see the look that was given. And I'm like, no, 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 let me go in the studio and, 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 and just not even act because I know where I go gonna follow do you feel like it was just a come home thing like a come home of, of hearing different things i don't and know what it was i never had a chance to have a conversation with him got it you heard got it i would have thought that it would have been way different when he did when that day he was you coming, said that you said that i remember Bino talked it? about mm -hmm. it and you just got up so the guy up and walking away was just mostly like stack he was thinking about because he was asking about stacking up and, and i remember like i said Bino and him but i don't tell him that nah man that's not you know but i blame you once again i blame you for allowing these narratives to be painted you know and you're a guy that 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 you're a good guy, man. I, I, lo I love you, man. I'm a my, great guy. You show my mother love. A lot of people don't know that Pop Champagne, that's a skinny Bernice Burgos there. Like he 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 nah. showed up her. Yeah, 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 Stop. yeah. yeah. Oh, you want me to say that? Stop. Oh, I'm a chill. Uh, you showed her love. Stop. She started. She Pop Champagne. That wasn't her. I mean, yeah, she was in the video. Shout that wasn't her. Yeah, shout, yeah. Shout out. Shout out to Bernice. Shout out. Shout out to Bernice. She definitely one of the top dogs out there for uh, way top. Escalator, she's still going up. That wasn't her in the video with the with the gold on doing the spin. It definitely was her. Definitely was her. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> Chill. Um, you got me talking about a lot of shit I don't talk about. So you, I know, I know. I, I um, I don't like heard? how you treat. You know, I have to. Why don't you forgive? I do forgive. I just don't forget. Copper, you really. Don't forgive. I do forgive. I just don't forget. I got. I'm a passionate person. You know her. Compassionate. Compassionate. That's the, that's the word. But I I I I forgive. I just don't forget. So if you did something to me that I don't appreciate and it's that detrimental, then I believe the best thing for us not to do is. Not to talk anymore, no matter whatever the circumstances is. So, if it's over money, that was a small price I had to pay for not having to deal with you in them situations anymore and shit like that. But I learned to love a lot of people from afar, and it hurts me when I see something happens to those people and shit like that, especially anybody that I once loved and shit like that. But you cannot violate me and think that I'm gonna ever forget what you did. And if you press that line, then I'm gonna give you what I should have gave you in the first place. Cabo, a lot of people wanted you to, to, to forgive a certain individual. And you just you just won't. I spoke to you about it privately. You just won't. I don't do the smile. You just won't forgive. A lot of people try to make peace, and you just won't. Now, I just want to ask you one question. I'm not. I'm gonna be careful because you're my man. Is it because? Because one thing about it, you love. Is it because of what was said, bro? We're not going into nothing. Right. You heard. You know how this is gonna go. I right. gave you a moment to do it, but it's, we ain't doing that. I don't. I don't want you to disrespect nobody. I'm just saying, why don't you forgive? Just can you answer that? Can you answer? Can you answer why you don't forgive? Is it because? Is it because? It I said I do forgive. I just don't forget. But people been trying to squash that, and you don't want to. I I don't I I don't feel I don't know what you're talking about okay. right now, bro. I'm just saying, I'm your brother. You I'm I know people been trying, bro. On top of that, not, see, uh, you don't want to talk about it. Leave me the f alone, Flip. All right, you're you know I know the real stories. Flip, leave me the f alone. But let me just say one last thing. I'm gonna move on from that. When Killer called, Capo love Killer, and Capo like, 
it's, it's deep. It's deep. <laughs> like, <laughs> Ed Two Brute, what is this? Julius Caesar Day? What do you feel? Scratching the back? Did he cut Jesus' sandals? <laughs> no, for real. Killer called the. You know what I'm talking about? Capo, like. Yo. All right, what I'm gonna move on. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm gonna move on. Huh? You know what I'm talking what the, about? I'm gonna walk my man. What the fuck are you talking? I just, about? I just want to, I just hope one day you could it's teach not, me to forgive. I don't know what the fuck you talking about. Can you teach me to forgive? Yes or no? I gotta teach you how to forget, but not forget. <laughs> oh, you teach me how to forget? You said. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stag died. What did it? What did it do? What, what did it do to you when uh, Stag died? Man, uh, very difficult time in my life. It wasn't even. It wasn't only Stack that had died. Holly had died the next month. So Holly had died. Was I had two deaths of two of my closest young boys. And it it it, it took me for a spiral for a minute and shit like that. Um, as close as I ever had gotten to Stacks and the relationship I had with Holly. And just being on the road with everybody and everything that's happening so fast and you know, in life, you don't think about somebody's not going to be there tomorrow, especially somebody like Stacks. That's the furthest thing from your mind. And I just talked to him, and, and we were talking about all the shit he's about to do, and he's about to go to the bank. You know, I just, he he made me smile just to see how he's moving and shit like that. And, and that shit just kind of crushed my soul and shit like that. Like, it, it, it really, it was a tough summer that summer for me and shit like that. Like, and it was Holly bad, right? died on my, my, my B-Day, I believe it was, right? This was a lot for me to, to take in. And, um, you know, it'll still be hard for me to talk about Stacks to this day. It'll still be hard for me to listen to his music to this day and shit like that. And a lot of people ask me why. Yo, you don't be playing this music, all, all this other shit. But they don't know how hard it is for me to even hear his voice or to watch his videos or to him say squad up. And, like, you know, that shit hits me different than it would hit anybody that was his fan or might have knew him or might have liked him like it's a little bit it's a little bit different for me you know what i mean like so a lot of people thought that you had uh or you still had unreleased stack records but they don't know that you like another thing that you just let just people just say you just let it say because you just think you some sort of genie in a bottle like oh y'all can say what y'all want three wishes i pop up no like people think that you still had his, his records that you still had unreleased and you complied. Like, well, I don't want to use the word comply, but you, what's the word? You and the family had to understand it at the time. You know what I mean? Like, you didn't, you don't have any unreleased stack records. Um, No, I didn't have, I had a few records at the time and shit like that, but it wasn't like I had a slew of stack records. He had another studio that he recorded. Yeah, Miller. In. Inside of Queens, yeah, Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. That studio had multiple records from Stack Bundles. Um, he just had so many people trying to dip into his legacy before they even let it bloom. Before we was able to do something for it, for it to make some money for his family. Or I mean, then his pops came home, and his pop has had his own scenario about what should happen and, and how it should happen and things like that. And you know, I, I knew Stacks, I ain't knew his family, so it wasn't, I, I definitely wasn't gonna sit there and go back and forth with nobody, family members that I did not know from nowhere. But one thing I do know is I'm a good judge on character and things like that, and I know a lot of them people at the time, mm, there wasn't in it for his best interest. There was a lot of ulterior motives when it came to using Stacks' little bit of success that he was gaining at the time to their advantage, and I didn't think it was fair, so. I just chose to step back and not say nothing about it. And I don't really care about what people say or how, what people think about me. I've never been a fan of none of that shit. That shit don't pay me no dollar bills, you know what I mean? Like, and I've never been outside with somebody express how they felt to me personally. <laughs> I mean, but, but Coppa, come on, man, really? Like, yeah, we, we, we know, um, shout out to Miller, I mean, Stack stuff was there. Uh, I remember at a time that you were interested in getting a situation to, to put out a stack album. I was trying to, but yes. the dude with the dude who owns the studio was unrealistic with his expectations of how it was supposed to go. And that was one of the last straws too. Like I'm not going back and forth with you, bro. Like you obviously think it's a it's a money grab for you somewhere down the line or somebody's trying to rob you of some sort when none of this music is yours to give anyway and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like it was just it was just a lot of different So you spoke parts. you spoke to you spoke to I never knew I didn't know you. you I didn't you spoke to Miller yourself? You spoke yeah, to Miller? I had a I had a conversation with him and he was trying to ask for some type of absurd type of money 
way more than whatever the studio time that Stax had used in it was worth at the time. And it was just like, it was very distasteful and shit like that. And um, at that time, I just, a lot of things had, I had to find a deep place in myself to make sure that I continue to move in the right direction and shit like that over that small instance because of how much I love Stax. But yeah, that dude wasn't, he wasn't, he, he, he wasn't, Thinking I right. heard he acted fifty thousand for the record. That's what I heard. It was actually a hundred thousand. So it wasn't fifty. It was a hundred thousand. Hold on now. You sure? How about you told you a hundred thousand? I'm telling. You. Who you talk? Isn't there nobody <laughs> talk for me? I'm telling. You. <laughs> all right, my. I'm telling you, man. Stats was my artist at the time. I was trying to get all the music I could. You go ask Chris. Chris was there. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. Luck was there. Yeah, like he asked for a hundred thousand. I was like, yeah, you bugging like. And then you know how the rest would I was, I was at. A yeah. hundred thousand. Did he? Mm. And you didn't get a breakdown. You didn't want a breakdown of, of what the hundred thousand was for. You just because I know how you get. So one thing I learned about you, I watched you over the years. It's like a couple of people that can talk to you. Mel is one of them. Seen Stack do it as a couple of people. You start, you know, I didn't see your encounter really with killing them, but you start to shut down. They're like, mm. like and you want to go somewhere else. Nobody got time for that. So when this man is telling you this. Did you give him a chance? Did you did you give him a chance to have another conversation? Like, yo, nah, I can't do that. Go think about it. Or you just, it was one of the, I'm shutting down because of all the stuff that came with it. Like his pops came home, Ray C came home and, it, you know. I didn't shut down. I Of course, I tried to speak some sense into him and shit like that, but he was just too unrealistic. Like, he was really being unrealistic. I didn't even know the name was Miller and shit like that. But, yeah, I, try, I, I attempted to get the music from out of there because he had a lot of dope music. Remember, he was he trying to finish up a mixtape. When he came off tour, he had put that record out and shit. Like, like, just even thinking back, the whole shit is bizarre. Like, that. like, you know what I mean? Like, this is, and, and that's another thing. What I'm saying, you got to watch what you project in these music. And I see all these kids making this op music. Stack, Stack Bundles was making op music back then. Now that I'm looking back at it, he was <laughs> right. Yeah. Some say it's crazy. <laughs> what? So I'm just saying, like. Just so, so many Fully different. loaded. I was in the studio for that. Mm. <laughs> and we was in the studio for click, click, clack. I mean, he, came off, he came off tour and he put that record out when we came off tour because it's just, God bless him, man. And he's looking back and seeing how these youngsters is running around now, just, you know. But I just, I, I'm just happy you said it because I'm on JR because JR, you be around a lot of times and G, mm. we hear these things and I'm happy that I'm able to get this get this out of Jim. And Shatik here, like we all, Shatik being from Queens, being that dude and being in the industry and doing the, all the famous beats and all that shit, you know, he don't want to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? DMX beat, Drake beat. Uh -huh. he, he tried to hide. Be so film. Yeah, he tried to hide. But we, when we talk about Stack and we had these conversations, mm. everybody, right, Shy, you can believe it, they put it on Capo, right? They blame him. And Bino and me is the only ones like, wait, hold on. And Bass be like, wait, what are y'all talking about? Only and, thing that I ever did was try to help Stacks in, in all of his situations and a fact. When we forged our relationship, I told him until he did a deal, I'ma hold my end of the deal up. I know what it takes. I know where you at in life and shit like that. So, and that's when I told him a clove mouth, a clove mouth don't get fed, and I can't read your mind. Just remember that, you dig. So, at any time, and this is not going right for you, and I don't know about it, I won't know about it. So, you gotta let me know. And he God did. Bless. I remember. Yeah, we was there. He was like, "Yo, geez, you said clove mouth don't, don't get, get fed. fed. Mm -hmm. I'm up. Uh, Fuck up the pack." <laughs> pack up mm. <laughs> and I start laughing like yo go to the bank tomorrow or go yeah. to the front whatever day it was and it was like the next day he he didn't make it no the next day he didn't make it to the bank because he went out to the party after I told him that shit that night yo went out to a party yeah yo overslept he mm. didn't make it to the bank that day. He called me like, geez, I ain't make it to the bank. Overslept. You know we went weekend. crazy last weekend. night. It, it was the weekend. Yeah, it was going. Yeah, that's right. You're right. And the I was like, well, closed. go on Monday. Yes. And he got killed on Sunday. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's what happened. Because I saw him. I saw him the Sunday when he was going out to go to the club. I saw him. Mm. I told him. So, I said, just take your ID. My accountant just go in there and show him your ID. And, and, and they're going to give you the money. If if anybody, so one of my dreams is and now I'm in a better position in life. And of course, you know, if anybody came to the realization, would you ever put out an actual stack album? Like, say if if everything ever got worked out and become the Okapa, would you would you still do that, or you feel like 
the time has passed. And I want to know. Nah, honestly. hell no. The time has never passed. I will always put the music up. I would love. I would love to put a dope album out if I could right now, and then mix it with some of the new artists that's popping right now. Because remember, Stacks died at a young age, so his his music is still young, and some mm -hmm. of these young artists are dope. I would love to do an album like that and shit like that, and really and, and still get some of the some of the the, the 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 legends, the kisses, and all that. Because you know he was a rap rapper. He was, he was wrapping circles around everybody in the game at that time. Like, knew they could not fuck with Stacks. I don't care who it was. Like, period. Like, he was going way up, and he wasn't coming down. He had endless bars, and his mother was there. He was handsome. He had the whole package. He knew how to dress. He talked slick. He was tough. The girls loved tough, him. Tough, light-skinned. Mm -hmm. Girls loved him. You heard? And the industry started to love him, especially from the New York standpoint. And that was a time when New York was still prominent in the game. You know what I mean? And he was looking like he could be the next out of New York to really take some fame. Shout out to Bino, though. A lot of people don't know that Bino was really, like, the backbone of Stack Bundles. Mm. Bino did a lot. You see what he said he did for Killer? Yeah, yeah. yeah Bino did Bino a lot. was there every step of the way. Bino. I had all you on tour with me. All I was with me. I was the youngest. And Bino, yeah. did def Bino definitely did everything that Stacks needed him to do. He definitely picked up the missing pieces. He was there. You know what I mean? Like he was there in a lot of different ways for him and shit like that. Like and, and I, I, that's what I respected a lot about Bino and shit like that. He he knew his position and shit like that. Shanks. Not to mention he was big as shit, so he looked like security when he coming through. <laughs> you heard him? boss, and then he's smashing the head if he had to. Like they had a great relationship. Like all oh, y'all had a great relationship. You had a good. You had a, a, a nice little camaraderie and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like we had fun times on that road too. You was bad. I was I was young too, so you know what I mean? Like. You was banned from the clubs in 06, remember that? Yeah, I was banned from everything in New York City. Like a mayor's ordinance, Jim Jones is not allowed in any type of venue in New York City. And the person that helped me actually get out of that band was your mom's. Yeah. I mean, his mom's <laughs> his mom's a uh, very important person. I won't say the, the office, but she's a very important person <laughs> at that office. And... um. She, her nephew kept getting in trouble. Her nephew name kept coming on the desk. Yeah. And Flip would call me like, Yo, my mom said your name came across her desk again, bro. Like, yeah. what the f*** are you doing? That's a fact. Then she said, yo, your, my mom said you cannot go. It says you're banned from New York City, she said. I was like, oh, boy. She's like, she going to fix it, though. And she fixed she said, give it. her some time. She definitely fixed it, man. And, so mom. I'm forever yeah, indebted <laughs> for that. Word, and that was love. See, he remember. See yeah. that? I feel yeah, that was a, that was a time I was uh, moving real ruthless in the city. You know, <clears throat> not a, not a time that I'm too proud of. But yeah, that was one of the end results of moving stupid and thinking you could do what you wanted to do and shit like that. And the city kind of <laughs> the city kind of got tired of my bullshit for so many years. Um, hmm. Now I've been doing this for. Uh, since we've been going to the tunnel, I, I was telling somebody the other day, they, the whole rap police or hip-hop police, whatever unit it is that people know them for, them same people, when I was coming up, them same people with a gang unit. And them used to kind of follow me all over anyway in the, midst, in the heights of the whole blood era when we started getting so much fame and the East Side story for the blood started taking a commercial look because of our fame. And then they, we was young and then we was it just was too much and them same people when we started signing our deal and become super famous they switched them from being the gang unit to hip-hop police because mm. we started having money and going a little bit more extra and then 50 cents start coming in and he had his whole shit that was going on so it was like we were like the two uh very the two uh, p people on the bulletin board at that time was uh, me and 50 Cent. And they was on our heels badly. I mean, it was like a movie. Hmm. You couldn't understand. Like, that's what people don't understand. Like, I mean, like, but am I lying, Flip? You're not. Like, I'm really like, really? Like, you, these just followed me from, like, as long as I came outside, they was following me. And they had to stop at the New Jersey Bridge It'd be nights I'd be out at 6 in the morning and they come knock on my car door like, yo, bro, we want to go home too. Like, what's up with y'all? Go to sleep or what? <laughs> you heard we tired. Like, <laughs> it was outside. <laughs> yeah, you remember that? You, you understand? So I don't, and 
laughing, but I want people to understand. The one with the short curly hair, he was on. The detail of what I'm telling you. Mm. You heard? Yeah. Like, I'm being tailed by police 24 hours a day while I'm in New York City. And I still see remnants of that now and shit like that when they know I'm outside and got venues and shit like that. But at that point, no, it was a bullet. It was, no, you heard? Like, heels, like, they know all my cars. They got detail on everybody I'm with. Like, it just was a... It's, and then by no means am I calling saying anything. I don't I don't even got a cap on, so I can't cap at all. You heard? You dig? You sh me. But God bless them here by a lot of prayers and, 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 and a lot of luck. You heard? Fifty. Remember that whole situation? I was around for that. Yeah, um, fifty had a fifty was they they had their own thing, a lot of I remember, was, I remember. city was different at that time. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, don't 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 try to speed through. Don't try to speed through. Oh boy! Don't All right, here you go. Touch your mom. I right, let you finish. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Do, do you feel like I, at the, <laughs> you know I'm, I, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to think I'm gonna ask because you my man. So that's right. Uh, no, don't do that. <laughs> dice, mind your business, man. Don't do that to me, Dice. Do you think that so at the whole time, like Fifty try to do a chess move? Right, but you know the whole thing with him and Cam, and at the time, you know, because remember Cam called up and that whole situation, and he was saying all these things. Do you think that that could have led to any, like you think Killer was mad at that? Because you ain't say nothing at that time. At the time, you ain't say nothing. When Fifty did a Cam, he's gone. Not, not he's gone. When he's Curtis, you ain't say nothing. And he was like Jimmy's the and all that. You ain't say nothing. We was on you. We was watching you. We was waiting. You ain't say nothing. Now, I don't know why you didn't at that time. I know now you don't care. You took it. But do you feel like it was a chess move on his part? Because you ain't say nothing. Do you feel like everything happened in perspective? Because, you know, after that, Killer just. Nah, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a chess move. Like, I'm looking at a perspective. 50 said something about Koch. And Cam took offense to that. And at that time, I was riding regardless. So, me not saying nothing mean I'm ready to go. You heard? If I say something, I... I, I but you still had ball in our cop. You had a voice. You didn't say nothing. Yeah, because you're not listening to me because okay. I was ready to go. I was still capital, bro. I was ready to go. So you got to watch what you say out here. I'm still a smart man. You dig? Like, you project that shit on any type of camera or any type of shit. You get your shit caught up if anything ends up coming from them to type of situations and shit like that. Like, this is all tricky. But when he said that shit about, Cam, about the coach and Cam took offense to it, I was like, man, I don't really, in my mind, I was like, I didn't really understand the correlation of why he would take so much offense because he didn't say the diplomats where he said if some said Koch is a cemetery label or whatever, shit like that. I was like, we could have probably flipped that so many ways, and, and, and but it was just the way Cam was feeling and any way Cam was feeling at that time, I was ready to do it. And then um, people were confused when they was like, oh, when they see me end up doing some shit with 50 a little bit after that shit and shit like that. And, um, I more or less was like trying to figure out how to put that together so we could make a super bag. You dig? Like I was just trying to figure it out. Like yo, I'm like at that time it wasn't making no sense. Ain't nobody getting killed. Ain't nobody getting shot. We beefing over imaginary players. You heard? Like I was like, so I think different. Like I'm pulling up on them. Like you dig? Like and got a couple chances to talk to him. We just. You know, nothing really didn't, and it never really happened. And shit, but that was on my mind and shit like that. I know G Unit and Dipset at the time was some of the hottest going on. And I was like, for the life of me, if we could figure out how to do some shit, this shit would be so crazy and shit like that. And that was one of the reasons why I was like, all right, I'm going to pull up on a boy and shit like that. But you know, the media always paints it to what it's supposed to be. And I'm not the type of person that's going to sit here and explain myself to nobody. You heard? And waste my time explaining and, and, you. And that's you and don't that put no problem. money in my pocket. Once again, G. Punk. That you once heard? again. Don't, don't put no money in my pocket. What I look like taking time out of my day. Time costs. You heard? Literally, this one is this costs fifty right here. That's a lot of that's that cost. What I look like taking time out of my day. Or this fifty pack to explain to you some because you need to know about some about me. Talking to me or you talking to Jeff? I only got three words for you, really, but I'm trying to be bigger than that. You heard? You talking about me or in general? No, 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 not you. I'm just talking about in general. Uh, uh, wait, but why you looking at me with all that, with all that energy? You talking about me? I'm not but them, bro. I'm your brother, bro. He passionate, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He passionate.
at that time though, you, you saw how it looked. It looked it, it looked crazy, but okay, you th- could, you I, thought it, it you did. take accountability for it looking crazy. Yeah, I could. I, I looking back, I could see it look crazy, but I had my own <laughs> going on at that time. I, That's the truth. People don't I, know that. I, I was pulled in a lot of different ways at that time, even with the diplomats and me and Cam and Jewels, and it was just a lot of different things going on and shit like that. Where us queens, we play I chess though. I wasn't getting supported the way I need to get supported within my own circle and shit like that. Like it just was a lot of shit going on at that time, man. So you know, but above all, knew where my loyalty was at. You know what I do. You know it was dipset till I died. I never faltered. I wasn't doing nothing to be down with nobody else at all. You heard? If anything, I would have set a bomb and that and blew everything up if I had to. If, if, Watch it, chill funny. out. I'm, I'm still from Queens. I'm still from Queens. Just, just talking funny. Cop, I'm still from Queens. All right, let's be. Yeah. I, don't, I don't play around with Harlem. I don't play around with Queens. I heard you. Let's move on. See what I'm saying? I'm trying to, because I know when you start to go, I'm slow down. Man, you're not even from, really from Queens. You're from Far Rock. I'm not from Far Rock. Oh, I thought you was from, you're not from Far Rock no. all the time? No. <laughs> so how the f you know Stacks? That's still from, Queens, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Linden and Farmers, but I know Stacks because Webb is my cousin. And Skane and Clue and all oh, that stuff. Oh, so I never knew that. I thought you, I thought you, you thought you was from Far Rock. I went to. I was scared to go. Why out you ain't telling me this nigga ain't from Far Rock, bro? <laughs> <laughs> the Queens ain't Far Rock, bro. You, you thought? Oh, you thought God. it was from Far Rock too? <laughs> far Rock I mean, is his own place in America. Of nigga, it's it's far own, Rock it's America. It's it's America. Heard what Stack said? Yeah. But hold on, but hold on, America. But hold on, Far Rock. Hold on, I was hold on. Far Rock welcomed me. I, I used to take the train up there. I went to see Stack. I was outside in Red Firm. They showed me a lot of love. You crazy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. I, remember I went to Edgemere. You know, I hear a funny story about the last stop in Far Rock. I had a, I had a, a, a girl in high school I used to see <laughs> that lived out there, bro. There's a high school right there too, right? Oh All my right. God. Mm-hmm. Okay. That type chasing. All right, they they might have chased me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, bro! I caught myself cutting class and going to see her. Like after lunch, twelve one, I end up right. leaving in her mom's. Get home, I gotta leave there like three. The mm. school just let her spin the block. It's like boom, a thousand. I'm like, oh god. Uh-huh. But I'm walking there like, who boy, who boy, yo, no, you know, I'm young, I'm in high school, like, oh boy, I'm fresh, I'm like, oh boy, I start putting this speed walk on on them, you heard, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. start hitting them feet behind me, I start, start busting the move to the train station, <laughs> like, what happened to the train, like, yo, bro, oh my God. That's what they do, now, Far Rock, Far Rock yeah. is different. Bro, Far Rock is different looking place. animalistic out there, it's like, I was Very. like, one on 2,000, I was like, oh my God, like, what happened, like, why wouldn't she tell me this happens? Like, why she didn't tell me it was a school? Like, I would, would yo, bro, oh, man. Dad, I meant to, went to, had to take my SAT in Brooklyn. I'm not taking the SAT. I walk up into Brooklyn. It's like this on me. I'm like, oh, that smell of smell it. That's good. Hey, yo, where the bathroom at? They're like, all right, cool. You know, I went home. I never took the SAT. But, right? And I study for that shit too. No, I'm lying. I didn't study for that shit. Um, I'm gonna, you know, cause you, you, you saw a couple sh- up here, man. You said what? Nothing. I don't. Want, and when I say um, y'all to the people out there, it's because as a friend, I try to watch my words. This is my friend. Respect. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to trigger him, but I do. <laughs> I do. You saw my interview that I did, and you posted it. You know, with JoJo Capone. Do you remember that? You remember you see that interview? Yeah, I talk about JoJo Capone, man. I'm just, do you remember my interview, at least? I don't remember. What you, let's bring it back to the interview. Talk about it. Okay, when I told him that, I told JoJo, you know, he was saying how, how hurt he was, and I said, it sounded like friendly extortion. You actually posted it, and you had commented on the post, like, yo, Flip, you had, you had wrote something to me. I remember him calling me because I had liked what you wrote. You had wrote on my Instagram when I posted it. You was like, something. But nothing crazy, but you were saluting me on what I said. Do you feel like, the story that he tells or what happened from his point of view, do you feel like it's over? Like, do you feel like? I don't even know what story he tells. Oh, okay. Right. He, he just not basically... a story. Not in my life. He don't got no story in my life. He got his own stories. Okay. You heard? Okay. Okay. You did? Like, I got it. You heard? I, I heard you. Do <laughs> you feel like y'all could have, like, had a conversation? About what? Come on, man. Stop playing. Don't do this. Don't stop. About what? What were we saying? having a conversation about? 
tell me. I think he felt like you messed up a deal for him or something like that or something like or something no, that he was upset about. What he rap? What the fuck are you talking about? Like I don't. Let's do. You going too back far in time, so you don't be, be yeah, emotional. Got it. I don't give a fuck about none of that. Shit. That shit holds no merit in my life and never held no merit in my life. Got it. You heard? And I got money all my life, and nobody put no money in my pocket at all. Only person ever put money in my pocket was Cam. Got it. You heard? The rest of that I got my myself, and I took most of it. You seen it? Saw it. All right. But this is what I was talking about, the forgiving thing. You don't move on. But all right, you don't breathe. Don't do the heavy breathing. I'm just I'm just trying to correlate to your forgiveness. Your forgiveness, right? Your, your for, like, you hold strong. You could have been had a conversation. Like, all right, that ain't about nothing. But you just. It ain't about nothing. That's why I don't got to have a conversation. I don't have to. Uh, yeah, I got it. I time got is it. money, bro. I got it. Take I got time it. out this 50 uh, pack to explain to somebody some shit about me to make your feelings feel good. I got three words that could make your feelings feel good. Why you letting make a paperwork and you don't say nothing? Why you letting lie on you? That's why I get mad at you. You got a problem. Huh? They talk about that gun charge you caught in Atlanta and all that stuff. Why you don't answer these things that you... Why don't I talk to simple people about simple... Why I you let them play with I you got real, you I got real money. I've been making millions of dollars since I've been 20 years of old. You think I don't have high-profile lawyers? What do you we think know these niggas don't go in the courtroom and knock out the box real quickly before they even stop that playing with us? Like, we got real live lawyers, Why you nigga. don't say nothing? You heard? Why you let like them... I've, had, I've, I've got lawyer... You heard? When I dial my lawyer number, that shit is a 30 clip. Just to, just to dial, I'm like, yeah, 30, ching, talk to me. After that, it goes up, ching, 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 ching. You heard? Until they figure out oh, where you at. All right, we ching you out right here. You know, that's what going to call you about a buck 30 this time. And how many times have you seen me do that? You heard? For me, myself, and that's a fact. That's anybody a fact. else. That's a fact. I've seen it. In a gang, got bailed out. That's a fact. No matter what the cost was. That's a fact. Down to the millions. Do you understand my point, though? You let the people run with this narrative that you some type of, like, when it's not true. Instead bro, of saying, like. You, bro, you heard what I said, bro. You know, it's time. You show, time you show the watch, about, a 50 got, piece. Yeah, I ain't got time. To, and this, I'm just not, that's not that for that. You heard? Like, that's minute and shit like that. I'm just with you, you know what I mean? But gotcha. really, I don't got time on my day to really complain to anybody about anything that ain't making me a dollar. And nobody pays me. Where I'm from, I kind of cut the checks. You heard? Like, I don't give a, give a f about none of that frivolous about what anybody can say about me. You heard? You dig? I, bro, these never been through anything real in life. You dig? Nine times out of ten, what people see on the media is all b anyway. Whatever the media puts out is all b Who am I to combat with any of that, bro? I'm not sitting up here explaining nothing to anybody, Flip. And the truth always comes out is what my mama told me. I'm not tripping about nothing. I know who I am as a man, and I know what I signed up for. And anything I went into, I went in wholeheartedly knowing I went into it like that. Like, I ain't tripping about nothing. And everybody that got into trouble with you, go all talk to them and see if I held up my end of the bargain. Yeah. You heard? I, I, don't, I mean, none of these is dead they all alive like you dig like anybody i did anything with they are reachable like they are like if i didn't held up my side of the bargain we would have been heard about it that's a fact we would have been read about it we'd have been saw it they're not hiding anything i do i'm a public figure you don't have to go look for that as soon as i make a mistake or do anything it's going to be out there as fast as you could like don't want to hear the truth nobody wants to hear the truth the truth hurts they don't want to hear the truth. You heard? They don't want to hear somebody like me being that substantial. Nobody wants to believe that. Man, I'm cool with that. Whatever, whatever you think. You heard? Okay. You did? You know, there was it, it was intertwined in that with the, with that whole conversation. You had, you know, they were. All right, to... like listen for the record. I want to let's let's do this. Let's just do this. Melly mm -hmm. is locked up, right? Of course. And most people think Melly is locked up for what? What do you the, think he's locked up right now for? Gang. You know, the, the thing with the gang with Takashi. Melly so. is not locked up for anything that has to do with anything that has to do with gangs. Melly is locked up for heroin and fentanyl charge that he was under investigation by the federal people. Mm. And whatever was going on in his life at the time, it was running the same time that they was doing all that shit. And of course, that's but Melly is not locked up for anything gang affiliated. So I'm just going to say that because I don't got to get into anything else, but. He's not locked up for anything gang affiliated. So I would like, what are you people talking about? Like, and that's a public record. You can go check that out.
But that's what I'm talking about. When people start talking, they never know what they're talking about. So who am I to try to correct you? I ain't got time for that. I got so much going on in my life. Like, you was a peon. Like, who the fuck are you to even question me? There you go. You heard? That's the bipolar moment. But I'm just serious like that. Like, this is a for real thing. Like, you know, like. Remember, remember, remember when they. I don't want to say yeah. Because you go. I don't want you saying that crazy. Remember when they thought the was at your party? Remember that whole that, <laughs> See? See? <laughs> Remember that? Remember they thought the was at your party? That was bizarre. I didn't like that one. That was weak. But I'm just saying, that's, what I'm, that's another thing. They like, they just throw all type of dirt on me. Like, why y'all doing this? I be so clean out here. Like, we got to dirty him up. There's no way this walking through this clean. He think he walking through here like Jesus sandals. No way. Dirty him up. Same thing they did to Jesus. You heard? That's what they do. Dirty him up. So they, yeah, they say, Shake him up. Wrinkle his shirt. Do I had, something. I had to call the I didn't like that. They were playing with my man, so they were playing with you, son. They said you were celebrating. I said, what? I went there. They, they could do everything they want to do, but they can't nobody play with my integrity. I said, okay. You heard? I got you. Integrity is everything out here at this point in time, and that's what a lot of these black out here. A lot of men, not even rappers, like a lot of men lack integrity out here. And they showing it. And they twisting the narrative of what? Having integrity is, and this is weak out here. Like, everything that I came up knowing is not the same anymore. Like, we really was trying to get some money back in the day. It don't seem like these is excited about money the way we was. This changes everything. The, the, the rate of these young kids going after each other is disgusting out here. Like, where all the hustlers at? A lot of these old got hold accountable because these be weak. Weak-minded ass that got some money that's scared to put young on and show them how to get some money and show them the right way a little bit. Show them how to hustle. Show them how to get a bag. You show these how to get a bag, I bet you they be too preoccupied with getting a bag. They're trying to run around the block with a poo shiesty on trying to find the out. I've been in plenty of parties with my enemies. And what happens? I'm a ball on these while I'm in this You heard? This how it was back in the day. Like, we gonna get to that shit if if it has to, like, but we gonna ball on you, like, it's like it's just like everything is that this is a very this has been concerning me a lot and shit like that because we it's like we we leave in a generation that is lose control and, and and nobody is being held accountable for this, shit, especially from where I'm from and shit like that from my perspective. I'm only one person and I know how I move. I try to, I try to give people as much inspiration and, and and advice that can help them more than it can hurt them. And I don't want to impose my will on anybody, but I lived a crazy life. So the things I tell these youngsters can might help them avoid some of the pitfalls that I may have went through and shit like that. But I'm only one voice, you heard. But if there's more voices like us, we could help change this shit around a little bit and shit like that. But these be weak minded. But I think that's kind of hypocritical. You just put hands with somebody in Miami. I did not put my hands on nobody in Miami at all. I sent that up and down. <laughs> That's this, I don't know what this nigga. Did about, you bro. not participate? No. Right, you didn't do it, but did you not? Were you not a witness to somebody getting hands put on them in a in, in, in a restaurant in Miami? I heard somebody was slot. First of all, who took this person and slid him on the table on some movies? That's disrespectful. And I was, if I was him, I'd never squash it. <laughs> Why would you have, why would somebody take somebody, uh, pay attention to me, turn the camera to me, said this, put him on the table, on a dinner table, and slide him by his boxes and his shirt. Who had time to do that? Now, don't, don't, laugh. don't cover your face. <laughs> Who did it? <laughs> now, why y'all did that? No, no, for real. <laughs> I heard that. I heard they got it on footage. Why, why, why y'all sliding on tables at this old ass age? All right, bro. No, for, bro, did you have did you have a, a flashback? I, I, bro, I, bro, I have no idea what are you talking about, bro. Capo, how do you go into a place, Capo? For real, you know what I'm talking about. The dude, bro. If I did anything in today's era, we would all have. We would probably all see it on like they see anything else I do. If I Capo, why, 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 if I ran a slip in the this. bathroom, they got footage of it. Like, oh, Jim Jones slipped in the bathroom. He's like an old nigga. Why, okay, old why did they put hands on, on the Freddie dude? Why did they put hands? Not you. Why did, why did why did why did people associate it with you? Put hands on them. 
What are you talking about? Like, what are you talking? Where's this happening? He got you- beat up in the steakhouse. Somebody I, I, took him out of boxes in his shirt and slid him across the table. I, I didn't see. It. It. I, didn't, I haven't seen this. I haven't. I, you seen it? Like you got you like it's on you. Like I don't know what you're talking about. I saw him had a bruise on his face. I saw his shirt was was wrinkled. What are you talking about right now? I like you bugging out. I, did he diss you before? You can who, answer that. Who? who? Freddie Gibbs. Oh, um, in the past, yeah, he may have said some some things that. Well, not the nicest thing that you would say about a person. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, do me for a loop. Like, I'm like, why would he talk about me like that? Like, I'm like the most lovable person out of everybody. Like, I'm not on, I'm not on anything. Like, when I come in the spot, I give everybody love. Hey, what's up? Oh, you good? How you doing? How your mom doing? How your family doing? And then you go around and you talk about me. Like, I, like, I don't know. I'm a friendly guy. Okay, and... Is it squashable? What? If, if he apologized like a DM, would you have a call? Because you know, remember, now it's a new You don't have to apologize to me. You know, Why would he want to apologize to me for? So the, okay, so I got him. We got him, G. We got him. So you should be apologizing to him for having him slip across the table. Why would I want to apologize to him? I didn't do nothing. I never did anything to this man. Like, this is what I'm trying to figure out. Like, I, I've never did anything to this man. You ever heard me say anything publicly wrong to slur his, to, t- to slander his name like have you seen me ever see any like you the only know. person i know that 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 wear them tight white yellow white t-shirts with muscles coming out breathing heavy <laughs> looking around you do the say i saw you but what are you talking all right so about when it happened there what were you doing there you was in the bathroom you, it, where, you where he you? got attacked in the same restaurant that you was in where were you i wasn't in there i didn't but I, I don't even remember i don't Bro, I, I don't remember being in any restaurant and a fight broke out. Bro, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like to go to those type of places where all the hip hopity stuff and these guys they they you know what I mean the big chains on they very aggressive. I'm not into that. Like that's not my not my style. You know what I mean? Like I just do music and I try to stay home and, and stay out the way. Cause these guys out here they're actually crazy. I'm scared of most of them. <laughs> Like it's a scary thing. You ever been in a room with a bunch of these rappers? They like so scary. Like I was, so, <laughs> like really, I had to hold on to my money, and I was like, like maybe should I put it in my sock? Like I didn't like it. So whoa, very aggressive. Are you gonna apologize to this man on camera in front of everybody right now as a gentleman? What am I? Who am I apologizing to? Imagine going to eat. Let me paint the picture. Imagine you going to eat steak. You shouldn't eat steak. Steak is like, you know, steak stays in, in your body for, I believe, like three weeks, they said, before it properly digests. I mean, it depends on what your protein oh, so intake is. Oh, if you were working out oh, and really? you were eating steak mm. for fitness, then that would be good. But you shouldn't eat steak oh. regularly like that. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. So so, so um, uh, imagine going to out to eat and you just mm-hmm. happen to see somebody that you talked about years ago or months ago or whatever. And now you're sliding across the table with the food. You're not able to enjoy your food. You're probably with a lady. And now you're embarrassed. And then now the man that... <laughs> you know, do... I, I'm listening to your scenario. It's like, yo, this is crazy. Whoever went through that guy, I, I mean, I, I, I would feel sorry for him too. Like, I, I would hate to be in a scenario like that. That doesn't sound... This is bizarre. So now the man that's accused of doing it you know, he's on a, a, a podcast, just just talking casually, uh, saying, "I don't know what's going on." No, Capo, I think that he's owed an apology because he didn't. He wanted to eat his. First food. of all, first of all, I still don't know what you're talking about. But you know, about Freddie Gibbs. Uh, you know, Freddie Gibbs is though. Yes, he's, he's he's a rapper guy. One of them tough. Um, one of them tough backpack rappers. Like, what did he do? He was a rapper guy. He had all the guns in his video. Like, his guy is scary. <laughs> G chill, G. G. G chill. <laughs> I know you like this guy. Don't do that. He's not that. He's not that likable. Nah. nah, he don't deserve none of that. You about to give him. Don't give him no credit. He's being passive aggressive. All right, we're gonna move on. That's a nice word. Passive aggressive is dope. I like that word. Got a, like like a, like a ring to it. But nah, I wasn't. I wasn't invited any type of fisticuffs. That's not my style. 
Shout out to um one, one, one time I had. Why don't spoke. you shout him out? Why don't you shout him out since you talked about him on your show? Why don't you? I don't really. Some, I don't. Uh, why don't you show him some love? Like he got, salute to a, Freddie Gibbs. Salute. Really? I don't really know yeah. him. I mean, I mean, you don't have to know him to show him some love. That's what I'm saying. Salute. I never heard his music it's, before. It's, I mean, you, we didn't even talk about his music. We just show him some love. Salute. He's a human. All right. What about you know getting I mean? him a new T-shirt? He's a human. For what about getting him a new T-shirt for having him slid across the table? <laughs> huh? I mean. What about that? Where his chains at? Where his chain at? What you mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What are you yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about? Yeah, 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 You're yeah, yeah, bugging yeah, yeah. right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. First of all. Would you want to call me Flip Nine now? No, nah, first, <laughs> first of all, 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 I have no idea what you're talking about. I respect you. Nah. We're going to move on. Her. Second of all, second of all, I don't rob people of their belongings. I, I, re do. I remember... I remember a story where I seen somebody famous get their chain slapped off of them like pow, the chains fell off. Out two chains. I went to pick them up and gave them back to them. Like, yeah, bro, gotta watch what you're doing out here. You lost your chains. So I'm not into taking anybody's chains. So who, I don't know. Who did the person get slapped by? No, no, no. I'm just saying, I don't, I'm just like, I'm just telling you things that I've seen in, in my time inside this, this rap game. Were you like, the slapper? I, no, no, I don't, first of all, there's, there's no, there's, I'm not the aggressive type. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, like, I don't put myself in those positions to have to raise my hand at anybody. You know what I mean? I wasn't taught like that. You did? I was taught to, to mind my business and stay out the way. And that's how I, I last so long in this game. You know what I mean? You 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 had a lot of ups and downs and I definitely had those and I and I see that so but I, I didn't have I didn't have any fight in any restaurant I had a lot of ups and downs but I didn't have okay. any right, fight we'll, in any restaurant let's just leave, let's just end with that I don't want you to do, to you know all right me? let's end with that you didn't have a fight with, in any restaurant no um, and I didn't see you didn't see anything. I didn't see any fight in any restaurant when hmm. How were you able to? How were you and French able to squash it? How did that 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 come together? I think that was that was a great. That day. was dope, man. Nobody got killed. It was real easy to squash it when nobody get killed. Now nah, shout out to French, man. With French, French is a dope dude, man. I thought that was dope. Copy. Got a hell of a career, man. You know what I mean? I thought, the French. I, I thought it was, I thought it was I was proud of you. I was proud of myself. Come to times in life when some just don't, some just don't make sense. Holding on to shit that don't pay you neither. That shit is crazy. You dig? You know, you know how I go. But I guess we both I guess we both felt the same thing and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, shout out to him, man. You dig? Did did he? <laughs> that's a trap question. Did he? Did he also put the request in? <laughs> Did he also put the Stop, man. Stop, man. Stop. Shout out to French, man. Shout out to the Coke Boys. And they just, they just dropped a new album. Yo, go, yeah, yeah, yo, yeah. Go, yo, go, yo, go get that. Shout out to the Coke Boys. Yeah, yeah, well, I, can you turn the camera real quick? Let me just talk to the people real quick. A lot of people, and I'm going to respect my man and G, man. Let me just tell you, like, Jim Jones, there's a couple of stubborn people in the society. Mm -hmm. DJ Clue was number one. <laughs> I didn't see people punch him in his head. No, I didn't see it, but I didn't heard. He not changed enough, and Clue is stubborn. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Clue official. Shout out to Clue. I seen Clue up, too. I did, too. Yo, don't do that to Clue. Like, don't, don't. You heard you going, don't do that. No, no, no. I'm just saying, when I say that, I'm not trying to play Clue. I'm saying that the, the point I'm trying to say is that no matter what you can do to him. It, he, you ain't going to change his you mind. You ain't going to change his mind. You got to mm -hmm. be, you, you don't care how tough you was. None At of all. Shit. Clue not playing it, and, 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 and that is something that I admire. Same thing with Capo. What? I, I'm not Cabo don't. People been putting in requests. I'm not saying no names. Mm -hmm. And he not with it. This ain't the request line, homie. <laughs> <laughs> he not with stop, it. Stop, man. Stop, man. You need to stop this. Killer told me that. the same thing. We ain't on that, bro. We just not on that, bro. We just not on that. I'm on doing what I'm doing. I ain't got time for nothing else. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if we had a problem. You feel that we should settle it. I don't care about none of that type of shit. I'm on my time. If that shit concerns you, that's something you have to deal with. Respect. You heard? Like, I'm outside doing what I got to do for my family and for the people I love. I ain't think about no beef. I ain't got no beef for nobody. I don't got no problems with nobody. 
I'm smooth. I'm smooth coasting out here. You heard? I'm a grown ass man, man. I got grown ass children. They got got time to be playing games out here. The new million, the new. So check this out, right? When we was younger, what was, what was go? So I guess he don't listen. <laughs> I guess he don't listen to the first album. <laughs> when I was younger, what was you going when it came to money? Album? Listen to me. You yeah, listening? I'm listening? You think I time to be wasting time out here? I'm trying to tell you some. When we was younger, a million dollars was the end all be all, right? Like, I got to get a million. Right? Yes. Cool. Well, the new million is 10 million. Yes. You think I got time to be playing with these when the new million dollars is 10 million dollars? That's the only way you're going to have financial freedom out here if you got a clip like that. Other than that, you're going to be subject subjected to the rhythm. You heard? You better get worried about that baggie. You people, dig? You just spoke about ops and, and, and kids and stuff. I don't have none. People look at you. People, hold on, let me finish, because you just told some real stuff, and I appreciate that. People look at you as, a, as, a, as somebody. You know what I mean? You are somebody, but they look at you for guidance. And sometimes... Peace in the Middle East is the best way, but I'm gonna stay out your business. You're a grown ass blood. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm staying out blood business. I just wanted to get that out, like, you know, people. That's a, that, that's on the list, Capo. I know you don't. It's on the it's on the top five well, list. Not on my list. No, I mean it's, it's society. It's not on my list. It should be different with the. Okay, it's not on my list. Yeah. Think about some old that holds no merit. Come on, what? Got me. Oh, you think I'd be going back in my past with shit like that? How would you have felt if 50 and Josh squash it be? I wouldn't give a fuck about what they squash. Okay. Would you think it'd do something for hip hop? Or you just mind, you don't, like some, sometimes shit is meant to. It wouldn't be as monumental at all as it would have been 15 years ago. Like that shit is over with. I don't think nobody would really care if they squashed their beef or not. It's not like gonna give them a prize. It's not like they did some ill shit. Got it. You know what I mean? Them 50 is doing TV. He ain't in, even into music no more. And, and Ja Rule is just Ja Rule, you know what I mean? He's not up to speed right now. He's, you know what I mean? Like, he's Ja Rule. That's, he's, a, uh, he's a legend and an icon in this game that sold millions and millions of records. I don't think they as relevant as they once was in the midst of they heightened they beef and shit like that, that it would make sense for people to care right now. So you're saying sometimes it don't make sense to squash anything? I ain't say that. You asked me what it would do for the hip hop community. I'm telling you, it wouldn't really be the big hit. Like, what you think? Would it be a hit? Like, would you wake up and they'd be like, oh, 50 Cent and Rule squash they beef? Would you call your man like, yo, you saw that shit? Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> You'd be like, man, would you be strolling up? Like, what's, what, what else is going on in hip hop? Like, I think it's, I think it'll still be something though. I mean, I, it, it wouldn't be as big though, like you said. It wouldn't be as big as it was years ago. But I think it'll still be some. I think people would still want to see it, especially from Queens. You know what I'm saying? We wanna, we wanna see that. He just wanna correlate things here. No, I'm you got it, Cabo. Cabo, you got it. Would it be as big as you think? Like, re, like, come on, let's be realistic. Mm, not like Jay and you not. think the young right now would care if Fifty Cent and Jaru kid if they if they they. You think these young drilling and spilling and getting sturdy no. care if Jaru and Fifty Cent squash they beef? No, no Cabo. Them, them, no. So who? So then who we talking about? Because they are the consumers out here. The our age is half dead or or going to sleep with their kids because they married. Like, who who the <laughs> f cares about that? You heard? You got a point. What? It's the same thing like a Diplomat album. Oh, we about to do another Diplomat album. Like, all right, cool. It's not the same like it used to be. Like, oh, they coming back to go. Oh, ah. I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be funny. Some shit just don't hit like yeah, it used to. Would it do something? Yeah, it would make us some money. We might make a couple million dollars, but it ain't like you did. Like, you understand what I'm trying to say? I ain't trying to be funny no, in the midst of me being funny, though. but it ain't gonna hit like. The young is not in, they don't give a f about Jay Z, none of us old. You heard? Mm. You dig? Like, they don't. They lit right now? Who? The young. And what old, which one of us old is lit out here for these young? Well, to I be respect like, though. To be like, these is lit. You're like, by the grace of God, they f with me because I'm really outside and I keep wow. young generations around. I'm trying to put people on and shit like that, so I'm in the loop. Mm. And by the grace of God, I've been making some incredible music as the older I get. I don't know how that shit is happening, you heard? But it's <laughs> happening, you dig? But for the most part, that, that thing, we ain't, you heard? It they, a it's, it's a young world. Speaking of the young world, they right? They rather right. see Kodak Black and the other kid that just squashed their beef. That's a big thing to them. Like, they right, right. Uh, NBA young boy, right? They just squashed their beef, right? 
That's big. That's the school. That's the beat. Who you want to see? Fifty Cent and Ja Rule squash their beef, or you want to see Kodak and NBA Young Boy squash their beef? Okay then. What are we talking about? Yo, you Your son he, just said it. You saw what he just did, y'all. Pay attention. You saw what he just did, right? <laughs> He's trying to say that he don't need to do nothing. He don't need to take them calls. He don't need to answer to them favors. He on what he on. He moving on and flip. Get out of here. I, I tell yeah, you, why am I shedding light on old sh for? Give these right. any type You're of right. You right. What for? What? Why would I mention your name for? What? I don't need to. I don't need your at all. It is what it is. And anybody feels some type of way about it, then that's how you feel. Spread. Don't bother me none. And y'all can't bother me none. Like I don't really care about none of that. Like I said, I'm not taking time out this 50 clip to explain to nobody nothing. That is. That you is said the, that for the, the 50 so I got That's it. the slogan for today. You heard? Okay, you Yo, me. so um. Do any of the young artists respect your word still now? At, at Jim Jones, like, you know what I'm saying? If you try to talk to them about the optional lie and getting money, like, do, do, do they listen to you? Count how many young you see out there right now. We saw them. Close the door. Count them. But he, he asked me a question. Yeah, yeah. All right, we saw them by 30. All right. I can you close the door now. We got, we got, we got part. You think I forced them to be here? No. You did? What the f type of movie shit? You did not die hard. <laughs> the hell you, you know, not Bruce Willis. Why? He, asked a, he asked a real question. Like, you, I see a lot. Of, obviously, this is what I do. That's I see. You yeah. bring. I just, this is what I'm here for. This is part of the rest of my journey, girl. Like, mm. not the selfish. I had my time to shine. Put the camera on him. Look, he's doing camera <laughs> tricks. He put the camera. Oh my god. I should tell Cabo, he was right there. Playing jam on him, double bossy on him, what's up, girl? Out here listening like a fool. What the hell? Yeah, big trade way on that. Hey, you keep you keeping your tags on your clothes. You're not bringing them back, though. You good? <laughs> That's that. Oh, <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> you know, you do bring a lot of people together, though. No, yeah, people, yeah. and he don't give a good nah, question, G. Nah, G. but I, I asked that because he said earlier, like, a lot of artists not coming out don't, you know, they're they not listening to, you know, the OGs. no OGs in the game no more. That's why I asked that. Like, are they listening to the Jim Jones that we know and respect as a legend? Are they still taking right. your, you know what I'm saying? Of course. You see Peso right here. You see Keen. Shout out to Dice Peso. Shout out to Keen. I I'm leaning on the next generation. I want to see these win. You heard? And that's another way for me to keep longevity in this game is, by having that young energy around me. That's and right. the more the young people see that I'm helping the young generation, the more that they show respect for an older it's just like, hey, We got to come halfway. We got to give, give, to, you know what I mean? Like, can't just take, 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 and not give. You did. And I've been, in that, I've been in every one of their position. Right. Mm. I've been stuck in the hood. I've been trying to figure out a way how to get out the hood. I had the talent to get out the hood, and I'm trying to figure out, you dig? Like, there was nobody there to help us. By the grace of God, we fell in all of them positions to be able to get a deal. When Biggie died, that's who told Cam he was going to get a deal. We thought it was over. Mm. You heard? Like, we didn't have nobody give us nothing literally. And that's why we were so stubborn when we got in the game. Because mm. we really made it there by ourselves. Mm. You heard? There was nobody that took us by the hand. So... When I see that, been in that position, and I see all these hungry artists and shit like that coming up, and and it's business too. You dig? I I I love the business that I'm in, and for me to continue to be good at this business, I have to start putting on more artists and signing more artists and seeing how su successful they could be. That that's the business side, but the 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 man in me, the Jim Jones in me, want to see these kids wholeheartedly be successful and find their way out the hood because I know the situations they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And for me to be able to have these kids here nightly out, outside of the hood and not putting their life at risk and shit like that is a little bit I could do, but it works, trust me. You heard? And it's cost. Like, Flip say, like, this studio ain't free. These studios that we occupying ain't free. That's a fact. You heard? But I know these kids got the talent. And all these tits, this talent could probably get them out of their situation. You dig? And I know that it's hard to be able to get studio time. It's hard to be able to shoot videos. It's hard to be able to. So I'm building a close net community of people that I can help through what I know and shit like that. And I know that for the life of us, the streets is going to end up in two ways. The dead are in jail. Mm -hmm. Very few that make it out for my situation. 
You heard? And like I said, I don't like to impose my will on nobody, but if I can help give the right advice to make you avoid some of the pitfalls I went through, cool. And one of them is you ain't got to be in the streets every night if you got a talent. You would come to the studio every night and get busy and maybe turn yourself into somebody like I did like that. You know what I mean? But that chance these ain't giving nobody. You heard? Like this is, I, and I've been doing this for years since I had this studio on 28th Street. What, what was it? It's not the same thing that I provide, right? To keep my off the street. This was a safe haven, controlled environment, filled with love. If we feel any funny vibes, I would hate to be you in here. You heard? I would, if you was, you, I would think you should leave fast. You dig? It's mm. not going to go the way you want. But besides that, it's family community in here. If I eat, you eat. No man starves in here. It ain't about money. I got a sandwich. You hungry? You getting half the sandwich. And always been that since Dipset. We very family oriented. And that's that started from back then. From my grandma house. When me and Cam were starving. And we was busting down dollar chicken sandwiches. I've been in every situation these kids been in. So the morals and the values that I had from back then, which are missing now, I still like to instill in the people that surround me that I love. And they catch on. Mm. Trust me, they catch on. Because these kids are from all walks of life and all, all hoods in this city. In a city where you see it's nothing but ops and everybody going at each other next. So the love that these kids show each other in the midst of all that and seeing the mission that we got going and everybody's like-minded and all trying to achieve the same goal is the only thing that I'm trying to do. I imagine if we had more of that. It's needed. It's needed. I, you know, I think it's though you even got dice sitting here. You know what I'm saying? Like some people come here for the interviews and sit there by themselves. Like you, you give him an opportunity to be a part of the platform and, and, and get his shot. Even King. You know what I'm all saying? All of them come sit right on the floor with me. Let me give you know that. They know how we moving. I shine, you shine. Back to back, side to side. You know what it is. What happened? <laughs> I do. I do. And I love the relationship with him and Dice. You know, that's I mean, right. Dice my man. So Dice. I, I, seen, I, I seen Dice Grind years ago, showcases and all that. You know, I done seen him come up too. You know what I'm saying? So He said that to me. It's, it's full circle. You know what I mean? And Dice is a smart because he knew what he wanted. Dice started paying his way to get next to me years ago, and I didn't know that at all. He paid me like three times to do three different features. You heard? But when you set out in your mind and you got a plan of action and you think that plan of action is going to help you in the midst of your journey, that was part of his plan of action and shit like that. Like, I don't know a young boy from nowhere. I remember Heat making like, yo, I got this kid want to do a feature, right? That yo, same kid, remember? He said he want to come back and do another feature. And then Trav... Was like, nah, pesos a hundred. That's the Mac. Oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. What the And that was how I opened up to Peso, cause the Trav was like, he the Mac. You heard? After he came to the, the hit maker studio a few times and I started to see him. But me, I was just gonna grab the money and do how that's feature for him. You know what I mean? But I know. Out either. <laughs> but now we here, and I, and that's that's my little brother, and it, it it feels very reminiscent of the relationship that me and Stack has, as far as me and him on a, from an artist standpoint. Like I don't know him from the street, you know what I mean? I know him from him doing the music, and and the bond we got now in the past few years is, is dope. And I believe in what he could do. He dead nice. He got a musical ear. Got them hooks, like, oh, he man. don't go. I rock with Dice. And he's fly. Huh. I tried to call JR. Fly. My son JR said, yo, Dice. Super Dice fly. Dice big, fly. So I, I called his, him. I said, Dice. Biggie. I don't know what. I don't know what he be doing. So I think he got a whole. I think he got some shit with him, though, bro. <laughs> I think he got, like, a truck where they put it. JR, we, we try to figure out, right? You try to solve it? JR said, I think he got a truck where they put it together. He just go pick and it up. he just go pick it up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got Dice. You gotta be nah, Dice no is one of them, son. Nah, Dice get fly. It's, 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 it's part of what we do, though. You know the lifestyle. Stacks got fly. Everybody around it us did. get fly. Like it, it just, it, it, it just, it's, it's nothing you could do about it. It's gonna happen. You heard? I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> you heard? You heard? G don't like that. G stop. Oh, G man. don't like him. G I like it. All of them. This is different. Mm -hmm. uh, you try? You just you rushing my joint, bro? No, 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 no. 
Well. Yeah. What else you got? What else you got to say? Damn. Hold on. Hold on, man. You you flip. I'm only giving you this amount of time because I've been telling you I'm gonna do this for so long. But I feel like you're taking advantage now. Why can't be? I love you. No, I, I watch you grow. I feel I like I'm taking advantage why you can't, of now. Why can't be and that? You keep selling me. You keep putting that out there like you're trying to. No, that's not gonna work. You, you're taking advantage. Been in here for 120 minutes. I know movies that's shorter than that. How, what how, the how fuck many is, minutes is this interview? What here? the fuck is wrong with you? What? You want to? You gonna have to cut this up ninety times. You are gonna get paid. I need pe I need percentage. Yeah, I'm not signing off for no papers. You only, on, I need percentage of you. this interview. I'm not. I do. I need my money. Let's keep it a hundred. First and foremost, you called me because you heard about. It. I got that deal, and you try to and you try to press me. My twenty three dollars. Where that? Yeah, yeah you try to do that. You try to you try to press me. Yeah, you know, I, bro. If you don't have my twenty three dollars yeah. for this <laughs> interview is over, you got smoke. How you owe you twenty three dollars? What happened? He getting all this Joe Button money. I need to get paid. Twenty three dollars. How you even it? found that out? I thought you, I, I didn't want you to find that out, man. How you found that out? Man, send me the check. Twenty three dollars. Send it over. Do you um? We're gonna wrap this up soon. You know, we close to wrapping it up. I feel like let me just say a couple of things. And I didn't know what you was going. I didn't really. You know, I never interviewed with you like that. So you gotta kind of. You kind of. You kind of sensible. Yeah, I think that I think that the relationship is is what made you open up because you you open up more than I watch you like a hawk. <laughs> you like no, no, no. I said, yo, Cabo, don't do that to me. <laughs> I told him here. I said, yo, please, man, I ain't even playing with this. That just goes to show you what the t I want you to understand who I am. And Are you solid? You my you, brother, when man. You, when you family, family going obviously get more than nobody can never tell me what a stranger get. You know what I mean? Like you're they, like you're gonna get some that I'm definitely not. You know, sit down and, and talk to nobody they, they, else they, about. They try to tell me about, they, people always try to paint a picture to you to me. And I'm like, ain't even buying. That's why I love buying them. Like, nah, you can't, bro. I remember homie. I I, I know him. My, he saw my mom sit, pop champagne video, but we was outside because they wouldn't let her in yet. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. And he, Jim, walked by. So my mom, they're like, what? You know, mama, let's go. Like, those stuff means something to me. You know what I'm saying? Jim, after my mother helped Jim lift his band, Jim came to the schools. Spring, in Springfield High School, right? Springfield High School. Now, that's that's, when, I first, done, that's yeah. when I first yeah. met Jim. Yeah, he came to Springfield High School. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. when yeah. KRS-1 came there, too. Yeah, yeah, facts. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and he was doing that stuff off the strip of family. So when they be telling me things, and I be listening like, well, yeah, be, uh, we all got our issues. I got my issues. We not perfect. We, you had to pull up on me about a meeting, about stuff. We all have it. But it's the intentions. I know my man. And y'all not going to tell me no different. You're not. They all, you all, you caping for him. No, nah, I'm not. That's why Hassan Campbell said sorry in that video. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to him, but that's what he said. Like, yo, you wrong. You got my man. Nah, that's not. I mean, apologies. I, mean, I don't like, really care about apologies, bro. Like, sorry ain't do it. Let's just keep it moving. Like, there you go again. I Sometimes mean, people people acknowledge their mistakes. Sometimes people jump out the window. You shouldn't have did it in the first place. So if you, you jumped out the window, you should you can't stand on no legs. So you so believe what you talking to me for? You believe prevention is better than the cure? Then a hundred percent. Prevention is way better than the solution. Remember that. Mm. Makes sense. It does, but I'm Pre <laughs> prevention to is way better than solution. Mm -hmm. You heard. If you could prevent the problem, then you ain't got to have a solution for the problem. I got it, but you I'm did? just trying to go against you, yes. I understand, but you can't. That's why. You heard? There's no way you could go around that. It just ain't no philosophy. It ain't my theory. This is cold facts. Prevention mm -hmm. is better than solution in any situation. Sometimes you can't solve the problem. You know what I mean? It's been too late. No, that was me saying that? Oh, my fault. I spoke, I was speaking out loud. <laughs> Not yeah. facts, though. Sometimes it's too late. What you going to do? You can't I say know. sorry. No oh, I'm I just saying he's right? a, this, you t we talk about real life, <laughs> something for people to go away with. Prevention is better than solution. I mean, I mean that you heard, and I ain't saying I'm perfect. I ain't saying I get to follow that shit all the time. I'm telling you some of the shit that I try to live by, and I'm still on the way to living by it and shit like that. We ain't perfect, like you just said. I'm definitely not perfect. I'm a I'm a piece of work. You heard, but I know consciously in my mind who I want to be and who I'm aiming to be. 
and I'm aiming to be better than I was yesterday until I reach the goals that I want. And the places that I want to go, I know I can't be the same person I was yesterday because they're not going to accept me there. And I'm not talking about acceptance of people. Yo, hearing me talk? We mm -hmm. listening. All right. That's the first time she, because usually, G, it's the first time you, you piggybacked over something somebody said. I think. Nah, it, it, make, it makes sense, bro. It makes sense. Sometimes you say sorry is too late. You, you already then then sliced my leg or something or whatever. You, didn't, you already then did some damage. Damage already, already you know done. You know no, this so it's, a, this it's, is a difference between a problem and a mistake. But some people confuse problems with mistakes. Mm. You heard? That was a problem. That wasn't a mistake you made. You intentionally did that. And you found out mm. it didn't go the way your intentions was. Now you want to say you made that mistake when you just caused a problem. Make sense? Got it. You're too aggressive for me, bro. Um, well, I'm just proud of you. Um, I just want to say that you're one of the most improved. You know, your last couple of albums fire. Thank you. I, I don't think that you get the credit that you deserve. We're um, still but, working on that. But... One of the most improved, improved artists to hit our generation. Like, I don't know how you do it. I watch you do it. Like, the last three joints was crazy. So I don't want to think, like, <laughs> fire, son. Like, Respect. You know what I mean? And I feel like I just want to give you credit for that flowers. But just, just, just acknowledge who you've been in this game and acknowledge what you've done for me and mine and the love you've shown. And, you know, I want the world you know to know. You know why I fuck with you, Flip Forever? Because they always tell me, you know who your friends are. You know who genuinely fuck with you about what they say when you're not around. And I know what you say when I'm not around if anybody mentions my name. It's a fact. You heard? I, yeah. I do know that. It's you dig? I do know that you definitely not let nobody say nothing wrong about me in any dialogue. And I appreciate that. My know? man. Because <laughs> I know I grew up with that don't do that. They do sucker shit when they get around other talking shit about me. But that's like. Man, they told me, they told me I ain't going to say some queens. Said, you a Harlem now. <laughs> I, I guess. I mean, that's my man. Uh, you know. Two people. I always say Cam was the first person in the industry to want to put money in my pocket to give me a situation. Flip is what we're going to do. Um, and, 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 and. It's a harm. He's uptown. Man, I got a special rapport with them. It's a harm. Nah, you're just a good person. You're and and Capo, ca Capo, you know. You, you, crazy, go, like, you crazy as f You do some wild <laughs> shit, First of all, hold on real quick. We got to shout out Trav, though. Like, shout, shout out Trav. Trav. 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100% like Trav. <laughs> Trav is a big part of the nucleus in my life. In, I love him. In, in my music and, and, and whatever we do. That's Babe Bro and shit like that. But he's very influential in, in my life and like that for for many a years and shit like that. Everybody know that it's like that. You know yeah, what and he's super queens. Everybody know. Don't Facts. play with that boy. He is <laughs> one of them. You heard? Facts. Do you have any more questions, G, for Cabo? Before we get about it? Hey, we got we got a question from my man, Shatik. Bro, what is it? Who 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 started? He wrote. Who started the crew mixtapes? Yeah, who started the crew mixtapes? Yeah, thank you, Shatik. Of course, Tip said did. We started. So let's get this right. Oh, Shati. Mm. Let's get Be this so right. Film. Let's Shout get this right. And I'm going to keep it all the way buck. We started the mixtape movement, right? And it wasn't a crew mixtape. We were making real albums and putting them out as mixtapes. The G Unit was doing replays of other people's beats and making mixtapes. What's a big difference? We were using our mixtape as albums to promote our real albums. And off those mixtapes, we were taking singles that the people started loving and started putting them on our real albums. But even in that, we put the Dipset mixtape out first before G-Unit put their mixtape out. Now go Google it. Mm. You sure? Google it. Shall I take what you think about that, Shaw? Shot, what you think about that? You don't know? I don't know. Isn't you to Google it? It would say diplomatic. Dip put set. out the first diplomat. One one of the first diplomat mixtape came out when we had all the furs out, and then put out one of the first G Unit mixtape came out. You can find out. G Unit in the house. What? What? That's what that's the beat you did, right, Shaw? 
Yeah, get out of here. You do mm -hmm. no dipset beat. We ain't rocking. Well, let's you. not take away from the success. <laughs> you did a dipset beat? What song you did? Uh, it was 40 Cal, uh, Cameron, <laughs> JR Ryder, of course, Stickles. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. How was your beat? Yeah. <laughs> Look, this guy. you don't even say nothing. You just sitting there. You corny, Shatik. <laughs> Why you gonna say something you like y'all did a beat? You got diplomat status. He ain't even letting you know. He ain't let me know nothing. <laughs> And, uh, I don't like that. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. G. I don't like like that. Yo, so what's going on now with Jim Jones musically? There you go. Um, I've been ready to start going crazy in the year 2023. As you know, I put out a bunch of shit last year, a bunch of videos. Um, uh, I got a Young Berg album about to drop around Valentine's Day. Then I got the Scram Jones album that I supposed to put out during pandemic. I'm gonna just drop that shit for the. Of it. We got the VL compilation that we about to start. Uh, Peso and Chicken about to start going crazy on that. Sh um, I got a Spanish album actually working on. I'll probably put that uh, out upwards towards the summertime. I'm about to go to Puerto Rico, actually go hang out with Archangel and sh like that and uh, get a record that he, he's doing for me. Um, Peso about to drop an album. Chicken about to drop an album. King about to drop a mixtape. Um, uh, about to do the Miami Vamp, my, Miami Vamps two um, album. Um, probably go down to Miami in March and record that. Um, what else we got cooking? Um, HBO. Oh, Harlem Bronx only. We got the uh, the EP. Me and Peso putting out six records. Um, we stacked up for this summer like that. I mean for this year. Uh, but with all that, after I put out my two projects, my two solo projects about to drop, um, I need different people going to love them. Uh, I'm going to get ready to start recording my next capo album. Like, dig it in. Like, mm. the shit that people been loving in this past few years, I'm about to go dumb again. Like, Rrr. like these got to hear me and deal with me. Like, I, And I'm ready for it. I, 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 I got to live in this in this past few years all over again by the grace of God and shit like that. You know what I mean? So with that Shout out to the Lobby. Shout out to the Lobby Boys. The Lobby Boy album. That's another mm -hmm. album we dropped this year. Shout out to Mano. My shout out to Fab. Shout shout out to Dave East. Um but yeah, shout out to everybody that showed love on the Lobby Boy album. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite albums. I got to talk my shit on that. It was it was it was we had a ball recording that album. Um I do believe we're about to start recording the next album soon as um they get their business right. Yo, Cabo, the last thing for me before mm -hmm. I leave, um, when you get married, I want to be your best man. My best man? I don't know. You probably had to fight uh, Melly and Zeke for that because they already... So, I already gonna, know that. Already gonna say, they already, I, I already, I already, they already that. bought the box for that. So <laughs> I already I heard about that. If you want to get into that boxing match. <laughs> but, yeah, that's... You know what I mean? But you definitely come and have some fun and enjoy. It's going to be... It's don't don't be, play with me like that. It's fun to have some... So you're going to put me in the crowd? Don't do that. Don't put me in the crowd. We ain't got no crowd at my wedding. Is Your going to be lit. Avalon in 03. Nah. <laughs> it's definitely going to be lit, so get your suit ready because it's, it's, that's that's finna happen. Um, Salute. Yeah, I'm by, the, thank, thank by you the, the grace of God. It would, um, it would. It would, you know. You heard? But yeah, I'm in a great space in life, man. You know, everything happens, man. They, they say you don't get a second chance at a uh, opportunity. If you do, you need to grab that shit with both hands. And currently, that's what I've been doing and like that. Um. Along with the music, I'm moving into production, as y'all can see, yo, in the sound station. I'm actually building up. I'm on my Tyler Perry, full Tyler Perry mode. Uh, Keenan Ivy Wayne's mode. Like, I'm really in that mode right now. I'm about to, um, in the midst of shooting 15 television shows, I'm about to shoot my own late night variety show with a live studio audience. Um, it's called Corner Stories. Um, think about... We ain't gonna talk too much about it, but it is this late night show is gonna be one like no other. Um, I look forward to doing it, and I got a, a hell of a list of guests that's gonna show up. And, and when I say late night show, I really mean that in the vein of Arsenio and Jimmy Kimmel, and but with a little cobble flavor. And if you you seen the spot, so yeah, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. And we'll show the people a little bit what I've been doing in, in a couple of weeks and shit like that. Um, so I'm excited for that. Um, besides that, I got over 15 other shows that we're going to start to shoot. And um, for Capital Cast, I'm building my own network of, of television shows. So 24 hours worth for them so people could watch it like a television channel or watch whatever show you like. Um, these shows are diving directly into the culture and shit like that for 
things that people would love to see. You know what I mean, I type I, I type of television and shit like that. You know what I mean? So, and I'm looking to get a flip show on the network too. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> it don't got to be a podcast. It could be whatever show you've been thinking about. It could be something off of what y'all already be doing from off your IG. But we need, need we, need a, we need a flip show on the stop, stop we need what a flip show on the network. Whatever you need from me, you man. Did. You know that already. But this is going down. So in about the next seven weeks, this should be done, and then um. After that, we're going to start the film, so. I'm here. I'm excited about that. Or, uh, so, you know, God's been good, bro. Like, I know I've I, I've been through a lot in this game and shit like that. And, and, you know, I just like to have fun at this point in my life and shit like that. Um, I done got older. I got a little bit smarter. I moved way smarter. You know what I mean? I'm I'm, I'm watching my, my son grow into a man. Got a beautiful family. Um, I'm living a dream right now, really, and shit like that. That's. As I get to look back and all my accomplishments and the, the life that I got to live and the life that my son got to live and he didn't have to grow up nothing like I got to grow yeah, up. Shout out to him. That's my I man. never had to compromise my dignity, you know what I mean, to do any of this and shit like that. I always stayed true to me and I mean it wholeheartedly and I always kept both feet on the ground. And how they said 10 toes down, mm. I definitely do that. You know what I mean? Like, so. For me to be here and be able to talk to y'all, you know, you've been around for a long time, man. You've right. seen my ups and downs. You've seen people try to bury me in this game. They try to blackball me in this game. They try to talk the worst shit about me. They try to paint me to be a monster. They try to paint me to be everything under the sun and shit like that. You know what I mean? And we still here and we still going. You know what they say in the Bible? A prophet is never loved in his own town. And mm. in this game, they build you up to tear you down. So, you know. And if G, you can outlast G, that. G, don't hype him, G. Don't hype him. Don't give it to him, G. He don't deserve it. That, was, that wasn't fire? G, don't give it to that him. That wasn't fire? Do not. I waited till the end of the show. You did. Don't get... Go ahead. Come on. G, no. Go ahead, G. Do it. He cool, man. No, he, he not. Cool. He, cool. he not cool, G. How you caught the Bible like that? He, why you just did that? He ain't from Harlem. He's not too, cool. Like, he's gangster. You he know just, why? Because. How he knew that on top of the. You give all Harlem. You can't give him a I cool. He not cool, yeah, man. That's my man. How you give him he cool like that? We don't have the box here. Bro, you know. it, it was there. It was just Why? Like, Cause I, what, what's going on over there? <laughs> he just gave you he cool. So he cool is something that we do on the show when somebody you know does something great. You ain't doing nothing great. You said a Bible quote. Nah, Come was, on. Nah, he's he off the off the off the, the, the top. They finessed the Bible is life. We are not gonna do that. Yeah. No, I respect the Bible. <laughs> no, no, we're not. Gonna, I'm just saying he gave you he cool. No bite games like that. So no, no, no. I respect the Bible. You yeah, I'm saying that's yeah. You have, <laughs> you have to. You let him do that to me. Don't you talk to my friend like that? Thank you, G. Yeah, but. I grew up in the church, so you know what I mean. <laughs> we ain't gonna put it. We ain't gonna put, we I know a little. I know a little bit about. I, I grew up in the church, and I went to Catholic school, so we ain't I've gonna play with the Bible. I've been around religion all my life and things like that. You know what I mean? So nah, salute, salute. Yo, we, we, yo, dope, dope interview. I appreciate you coming up here. Round of applause one more time for Cabo. Thank you, yes, sir. I love this. Jones. Hope I, everybody know we was just joking about everything. Don't take nothing ser serious or literal because I didn't do none of it. I think we got it. Well, hold on and real Flip quick. Like was lying about everything he claimed <laughs> to have seen, heard, all that shit. It just lies. It's all part of his show. Let me say, shout out to Shatik Beats on film. I think, Shatik, mm -hmm. we got, you know, you watch the interview. We got a lot out of the gym, right? Like, people don't really ask and stuff like that. You got a lot. A yeah. nice little history base. You all went in and out a lot of different shit that yeah. I haven't. Talked about on, on pull the mic closer to you, Cabo. Like I said, yo, I got a lot of that people haven't asked and haven't haven't talked to me about because you don't allow them to. I see Cabo like, <laughs> like this. <laughs> Put his head. Yeah, I told him that's right. He said, Nah. I said, <laughs> <laughs> G said, What you got? Nah, nah. It's, it's, it's dope though because before the show started, I was talking to Flip. I said, Damn, yo, Ka Cabo it. got everything online already. You know what I'm saying? Everything that's already you know musically, reality, TV wise. Like, so what we, we, we gonna ask him? So I'm, I'm glad it's you still went. A, in it's that still direction. bunches too. Like so. This is just nothing. This is the tip of the iceberg, but yeah. you know he's been around, so he got questions that he even seen that right, right. Nobody else seen from his experience with me and shit like that. I saw maybe that's the only reason why he did it because he really been around. Me. Hold on, we got we better wrap up. We got to get a picture up, and stuff. Just sit down, man. We almost done. Shit, we almost bro. done. We, we, off, we about to wrap bro, up. I'm trying to be cool with you now, bro. I'm about hey, yo, to get listen. back into my mode, bro. Hey, yo, this, man. Man, okay, up, bro. I love you. I'm telling you, bro. Can we sign I'm out? I'm telling you, bro. Yeah, this queen's flip. Throw this water at you, bro. What? Let me sign out before it get crazy here, man. Make sure I follow the pages okay, at Queens Flip with a Z. I wish you at would. At DJ G Money Official. I'll, at Flip the Script Flip, Pod. Shout out to Jim Jones in the bro. building. Yeah, we close. Let me close the laptop real quick, man. Shout out to, shout out to Braveheart Edition uh, on the sponsors today on the, on the Fit. Salute. You know what I'm saying? Put the laptop away for it. They start throwing water around the studio. And I'm like, I'm going to get my joint. 
messed up again from, with messing with foot. You know what I'm saying? Need that. That laptop for the for the gigs and all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm too, I'm too shout, for the water tree. Shout, shout out to everybody. Shout out to JR. Shout out to Shot Teak Beats on Film. Facts. Shout out to Bassy in the building. Shout out to the, you know, Capo, man. Um, dope, dope interview. I loved it. Uh, um, classic. Classic. Remember, lock your doors, close your windows, close your blinds, open your blinds. And if you see it like Jim on your lawn, don't be afraid to use a firearm. I'm from Queens. No, please. Please don't do that. You know why? Because he'll <laughs> please, slide please. you across the table with his crew. No, no, on, no, uh, no. With, with his arms, Queens. 